Hello, fight fans, and welcome to the Combat Challenge podcast. My guest today is somebody who has competed in numerous disciplines. He's had nearly 20 MMA fights. He's competed and won accolades in kickboxing, in Muay Thai, and catch as catch can wrestling. Mr. Ian, the Mongoose Jones. Oh, Ian, thank you uh, so much for joining us, brother, man. Well, well, it's early, man, and we've come to yeah. you. Well, I'd say it's like a bit of a den in it, brother. Oh, yeah. It's like craziness. Shed, shed it <laughs> and did you say it was half this size when uh, you started? Yeah, uh, uh, probably yeah, half this size. Mats were wet, roof were leaking, and mm. so that all started. <laughs> and you've got like, um, is it like a tarp? What sort it's of sheet? It's like, like yeah, one it's big like a, sheet yeah, over it's it all. sheet over the top, yeah. And, what, and it stops all like feet and the toes and everything yeah, getting caught yeah. in it. So it's perfect, brother, man. Yeah. Perfect. Thank you so yeah. much. Early for us, man. Yeah. You, you were here early, weren't you? You were up early doing yeah, your stuff yeah. and getting things set. Seven. Up. Roll out of bed at seven and roll it. Straight in here, straight into it. Well, talking about rolling, brother, one of the things we do right on the, this podcast is when we finish, brother, we're going to have a five minute roll yeah. and it's going to see how many times you can tap me yeah. and how long I can resist, brother, because yeah. I've heard about these neck cranks and this no. catch us catch can. <laughs> and that's why you've got ears like that, brother. <laughs> <laughs> have you seen mine? I got mine bruised the other day. It's, uh, it's not it's not as uh, bad as yours brother man uh, so uh, Ian let's talk a little bit about your martial arts journey from a young yeah. age what sort of sports you got into and talk us through that time like. yeah uh, what it was I started I think it was freestyle kickboxing I started with obviously my brother got me into it uh, so uh, what's what's the difference between freestyle it was just like all oh, flashy with eye kicks and stuff like right. that and like points and so like, that could be a bit like taekwondo or? a bit taekwondo yeah, yeah so i did that it was like semi-contact and then got into uh light continuous but because yeah. i'm really small i used to have to like go up against it was like mix sometimes i fight lasses and stuff like that and then really yeah <laughs> so and is kickboxing where they do it above the waist yeah, above to waist, score points yeah, above waist, yes. right okay. did a lot of that uh won a few british titles at that uh, but How old were you then, brother? I bet I was. I think I started about. I was always doing something garden, like sparring and stuff like that, from probably age of 12. But then my brother took me uh, kickbox, I think I was 14. 14 or right. my 14th birthday or 15th birthday, he took me and uh, it was a toss up basically. I used to hang about with like some like wrong ones. Right. And we bought some heroin. <laughs> <That's what laughs> <it>. Bought <laughs> some heroin. I gave up money for this heroin and we were going to take it. Uh, we we're going to take it, I didn't even know it was, we were going to take it, and I came up with kickboxing that day, and so basically it sort of saved my life, wow. so my starts like, saved my life. Uh, but you, unbeknown to you at that yeah. time, you yeah. wouldn't have known how addicted oh, that no, would have been. I didn't, and... I didn't know what it was, but uh, about a few hundred mates have died from it and stuff like that, and you see them walking about there, they look like zombies. It's crazy, isn't it, brother, you can yeah. end up on a crossroad, oh, and, yeah. and you were just lucky yeah. that your yeah. cards were dealt yeah. in a way, and yeah. you know, thanks to your I brother. I was like, thick one out of a bunch, I won't write academic, these were yeah. all really good, like I had uh, trials for Leeds United and wow. stuff like that, and uh, they're still, in fact, all of them are still on it, do you know what I mean? So, and there's me there, I seem to have done best out a lot. Uh, and I, I want brightest so it's just that one little yeah, road isn't it that yeah, you can go and carry yeah. brother but it was I was like bullied and stuff like that as well so that that was another thing as well like I was like bullied at school bullied at home and like took an hour tortured really when I think about it really yeah bad like do you know like me I can't you know my brother don't you I can't yeah. Yeah, like he's poorly he used to shit in bread bags I was on a he used to shit in bread bags and put it on my head <laughs> 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 So really? I did, honestly mate, yeah, he used to shit up. So I like spill up in bag and end up with all shit in me yeah. and uh <clears throat> still goes on about it now. But it was character building for like fighting I think. Yeah. Uh, so I used to spill up in this bag and my mum would and then he met me getting shower, I'd get in shower, wash it all off. And I said, Mum, he's done it again, he's shit in this bag and because like, he was golden boy, he'd get away with it. So yeah. <laughs> so I feel a wrong and like and then uh, when I when I think about it, the one's got me as well, uh Pin me down. This is bad. This like the pin me down. It's like almost like rape. The pin me down up on a on a bed. They're like him, Lance. They're about four him. They've got a pool cue. This goes on this. <laughs> they even shot the pool cue, stuck it straight from my tracky bottoms up my ass. Made my ass bleed honestly. And uh, that's like that type of upbringing you had. But they thought it was funny. They were me. Yeah, I was yeah. crying with blood coming out of my yeah, ass with yeah, blood yeah. chalk on me. My tracky bottom. So it give me a full way of pool playing and stuff like that. <laughs> 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 so tortured so like I, I was getting it like at school I was getting bullied for like being like I think it was racism because I had a bit of ginger in my beard right, and right. Yeah, so like picked up for being ginger so I had wow. it both ends at Spectrum do you ever speak to these guys and say look yeah well do you know the funny thing is now 
I like like arcade that beat him beat him up and roll about with him yeah, and stuff like that. Yeah, like, yeah. yeah. Cause he's like more into boxing and that now, but it's weird, isn't it? Like but I always see it as like character building, you know, yeah, like yeah. I know it sounds like wrong what they've done to me, but it will like I don't know, it's made me who I am, Joe. You know? yeah, I won't change sure, it, you know what I mean? Sure. Won't change it. Tough hell. I remember uh, watching a, a podcast of someone who was a bit of a, a, a motivator and talks yeah, yeah. about life experience, and he was saying that no matter how, what badness has happened, yeah. that has made you who you are. Yeah, tough So if that wouldn't have happened, you yeah. don't know what would, you yeah. know where I, you would have ended up. Well, I, tough hell. I've had I've had a mad upbringing, like John, like it was like jackass growing up. Where no, I like, hey, honestly. <laughs> like on a, we also, we're, we're like what's the, the age difference between you? Four yeah, but like he like he corrupted me, Johnny. Right. He was like we're like chalk and cheese. I'm like okay, well I'm used to go out and get drunk. Yeah, I was always like hey, you're not driving car tonight with L plates, so I need to go out and get pissed up. So we we're like <laughs> already illegal. And, and we were great then. We'd uh, we'd go out. There's like an old lane down here, and there's like it's a bit farmlandy, and we'd right. go out collecting like dead animals it sounds weird this right we'd go out collecting this is what a Saturday night we'd go out we'd, 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 we'd go out at nightclubs right and we'd uh, we'd go to nightclubs and there's, there's a pub up road called uh, well it's not there now well it is it's called Burntwood and it's a red posh place but years ago back in back in 90s early 2000s it was like rough and everyone used to scrap and there used to be a burger van so we used to drive down old lane get like loads of dead head jogs anything we could find airs, rabbits right? and, and it was mum dad's car so it stunk I can't get me sat there with like because my mum were a nurse like an apron <laughs> rubber gloves on with this like dead animal licking its eyeball at you, and it just stunk and the would be on the car and we'd like wait for people walking out past pub and like throw dead animals at them and uh, <laughs> we went up to Night Hall and there's a big burger van which drove it up and grill yeah. and everyone's queuing up for the like pie and peas and everything so I can't got to the front of the queue and he just honestly this rabbit was splattered he's just thrown it on the grill all of it grill and just we got chased off by that it was just like oh, stuff what? like that all the time like you were like it was just a nightmare you know there's like a big church up there we'll probably get locked up for this now but there's a big church up there and they, they climbed up scaffolding nicked clock hands off it all, <laughs> all of it all of it newspaper so it's nicked clock, clock hands weather vane and uh I was like laying in bed and I, thought, I saw these two it like it I like walk up and it was like uh, They must have looked like harpoons or it something was, or it was but like I walk up and I thought they were like like soldiers in my bedroom I thought what the <laughs> fuck's this and I felt this prodding ribs and I saw that came there with this big weather vane with a cocker on it and Lance his mate with this big uh, Duffing clock hands oh, and stabbing me in ribs and laughing his head off. And then at the bottom of the garden we had this compost heap, so he's buried in pot compost heap. And it went newspaper a week after. And my dad's like, yeah, my dad's an ex miner and he's like, uh, he's like Red Street John Bull, seen it in newspaper. Fugs nick clock hands off church. And I, I'm not kidding, it must be 90 foot this church, so I've got it finger. <laughs> so me and I came sniggering, knowing where these clock hands are, and he goes, the bastards aren't locking up my what is his oh, So pots had no oh, idea. No, I didn't have a clue. So he had no idea. He's like kicked off about it, like yeah. saying, "Oh, the bastards aren't locking up for that." Because his 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 man was like buried in graveyard and the right, roof. Okay. A couple of weeks later, my dad's put grasping out and he sees his clock hands and he comes running and he goes, "Right there, you little bastards, who's this?" And it like, okay. <laughs> but honestly, growing up with him were horrible. It was like I've never experienced all like uh, like in my twenties. I can remember this. He got kicked out. Our, it's bad. This got kicked out. Our, so can you remember them older pullover sunbeds that you had as a kid? Yeah, oh yeah, yeah. So I laid under one of them. Like, it went out like into the weights and that. I thought I'll go on sunbed, go up to the gym, and I'll trapped under the sunbed. And I came walks in and sniggering. I'm thinking, what's he doing now? Nah, what's he doing? I'm you trapped, knew there was someone. I'm trapped under the sunbed. Right, and he got some out of his hand. I'll never forget it to this day. And it was disgusting what I did. He's got a pair of mum's knickers. Right, this is God's honest truth. And she was in season. And I was trapped on this bed and he's rubbed him in his face and he's got him in his mouth and he's like scrunching him in his face, right? So we start scrapping, some bed goes all over, knocking shit out of each other. My dad runs in, he goes, what the fuck's going on here? Because he's put them knickers in my mouth. <laughs> and he goes, right, that's it, you're out, you're out, one ear's out. And like, totally forgot about it. I've gone to the gym, come back, gone in my mum's bedroom, watching telly. My dad's up back down and doing it long. There's this sniggering again, he's there with these knickers. So he jumps on top of me and I get on top of him and I stuff him in his face and my dad walks in and he goes, right. And this what defining mom when he got kicked out of the house. He goes, right, heads or tails? And I went, tails, I came with heads and I came and got kicked out of the house. No. You know, that, that, that was it like. So honestly, it was like oh. nuts. It was just like nuts growing up. It was like, I couldn't do it in the house. It was like, I used to share a bedroom with him. He'd like. Was it you and your brother that? Me and my brother, I used right. to share bunk beds, right? And this is how bad it was, right? It got to a point where it, it was the top bunk. Okay, right. but then I took it off him when I got a bit harder. But <laughs> um, it, stuff he did, it was just like it was just torture. He used to like have a wank. This is the really truth, and wipe it on my boxer shorts and fold them back up. So my mama got me in room one day. She'd go, uh, "If you're here now, I want to have a word with you." 
when you like masturbate, don't be uh, <laughs> don't be wiping on your boxers. I'm like, 50 year old, because mom, it's not me, it's like, hey, you're like, so like, all my boxers had stains on them. It was fucking, it was like oh a living, it was a living hell, do you know what I mean? Um, <laughs> and then it'd be like, it just all the time, it was stuff like that, they were 80 and uh, what was it now? I can remember, I'd be in Bath and Green, let me go to the toilet, and I, I'd go, and I'd like roll over on my front, and next thing I'd be laughing, they'd throw something in the Bath, and they'd throw shit on me up Bath and that, and it was like, it was just that every day, like, but it was like, <laughs> It must have done me mum and dad's head in, do you know what I mean? I'm not like, surprised, uh, on, brother. On it, but I like, I'll just talk to you, but when I think about it, like you say, it's like all character building, yeah, yeah, you know? It's, course, uh, yeah, and, and like, but I looked up to Ake, do you know, like, because like, I always wanted to be, not like him now, like, but I always wanted to be like him, but it was just, just growing up, it was fucking nuts. Like Johnny Knoxville. Oh, it was bad. I can remember my driving lessons. He used to take me out, really, dad, I'm taking out here now tonight. He took me out. And so he was supposed to be the responsible yeah, one. but this is like... God, I can't, you must have been about 24 at the time, right, and right. I would have been like 20. It's, uh, it took me about seven years to pass my driving <laughs> test because I'm that bad because he was like a like, getaway driver. <laughs> it, when I think about it, we were knobs, but at the time it was like fun. It, it just like drive about causing damage, and it bit, it bit newspapers like full cost. Yeah. But I was just getaway driver, I was like, just sat there, wouldn't, wouldn't do it because he just batter me, do you know what I mean? <laughs> And he'd be there with all his races launching bricks at everything. And, so. and your dad were thinking that My dad was thinking, out, yeah, but this, this was like, honestly, it, we'd just go out for like, I was just doing it. It was nuts, honestly. It was, good, it was like good, when I look back, it was like good times, like, but it's mad. Really, you need to write a book about oh, that. Oh, trust me, mate. Here you are. Here are nutter, mate, honestly. I've never known a nutter lad, but like to talk to him, you just think, oh, he's normal, but. Yeah. Mate, I can remember being, where were I? I was working up doors, and I j- literally just finished. I got this phone call, Ian, I've killed someone, I've murdered someone. I went, what do you mean I've murdered someone? I went, I went come down to the pub. So I've gone down to the pub, right? My mate were working up doors. Can you remember Big Sean? Big Sean McKenna, that big... Yeah, yeah, yeah. He goes, uh, Sean, I go, Sean, what's happened? He goes, you're crazy. Do you know them big uh, PA speakers? Yeah, yeah. A lad were talking to his mate's bird, right? So I can't, this is a dickhead, like, when he's on the base. His elbow, kid in face, and they were both just laughing on the table. So he's picked the PA speaker up, smashed him over the head three times, like, left him unconscious, and I've, like, gone... Obviously, he wasn't dead, but it left him unconscious. I can't even know if I murdered the kid and stuff like that. It was always, like, stuff like that. It was, like, a proper psychopath, you know what I mean? And, you know, like... It's, it's weird, cos I, I had him growing up, like, he was, like, a nutter, you know, like... And I was like, quiet one. But you had no choice, did no, you? No, I had no choice. It was like, <laughs> you used to sleep on top of you. It, it was sink or swim, mate, honestly. It was, <laughs> it, was, it was bad, but honestly, it was. I had some good times growing up with me. It was just like, when I look back at stuff I've done, I, I don't know how I ain't got done. Do you yeah, know like, yeah, not done for, for sure. murder or, honestly, it was just chuffing nuts. Well, we all have these crossroads, don't we? Mate, Anything could have happened mate, in, in all that, you know what I mean? I can remember another time, we were like, Wakefield, like, Wakefield rough, on it, back in the day, and, uh, the way these lads are like, I think it was Stu Brown and uh, Cy Cupid. There were some lads, I think it was on the street house or something like that, like a rough area. And uh, there were two of them, and there must have been about 20 of them. So, uh, this lads walked up Stu, or I think it was Cy, so like, they've ripped his chain off, took his chain and beat him up, mate. Right? So, uh, we, j- they were walking down the street, and uh, we were coming out, I don't know, about five of us, and I came, and uh, it went, uh, <laughs> You know what's happened to you? There some lads up there who just beat me up. I can't go, oh, and took the chain off. I can't go, oh, we'll go up. So I can picks up, I'm not kidding, it was a lump of wood. It was like diamond cars in Wake, it was a lump of wood. Do you know the post that they have like for fences? Yeah, oh yeah. One of them, it must have been that big. And at the time, I can't go like 15 stone. And walked up to this lad, and I can't go, he walked right corner like 10 men with this lump of wood. And there were 10 men there, or 15 stones. And I can't go, who wants some of this? And this big lad just runs to us. I can't go, it was like something out of a normal movie. I can't swung. And hit him full on right head, and he just went, boom, turned you in. You're having it, you. And it was like, it was like sort of a Charlie Chaplin film. I can't, you see, I can't run in that street. There's no chasing him. And uh, <laughs> he goes up to the lamppost and swings round and tries to elbow him, right? And they start rolling about on the floor. Lad gets on top of that and I can't fish hooking him. And, uh, and the lad goes, oh, you're going to get it now. And I can't, he's going, get off me, I've got asthma. I can't, I can't, I can't, I can't, I can't, yeah, get off me, I've got asthma. So I came, rolls on top of him, just about to fill him in, and you had these foot, beat, foot beats coming around the corner, and coppers coming and rest over there, and this is going to this truth. I can't go away with it. I can't just, like, look, gift at Gabby went, he went, mate, this nut has just attacked me. And, like, the same, I can't go his way, and the lad got arrested. I was like, for you. Okay, yeah. Does he have asthma? No! <laughs> <laughs> like, 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 he's just getting off me, man. I just thought, oh, Jesus. Oh, my God. Uh, it's, a, it's a nutter. <laughs> uh, 
And how is he doing now, brother? Is he all he's, right? Like, he's, or... like, he's up and down with his health, but he right. teaches a lot of boxing. Because obviously, okay, you were like, he did all like sports blogging and that. And yeah. he ended up with, I think he had a clostomy bag for about six months. And then oh, got man. MRSA, that nearly killed him. And then he got on mend. And then he ended up with clostomy bag again uh, through like... I think through it going wrong, do you know what I mean? Right, Colitis, right. but then we sorted it now, he's bang on, he's back training and that, so now he just teaches boxing, but he's a really good boxing coach, I care. He's got like a gym like this, probably yeah. a bit, well, bigger than this, we are. All best gadgets in the world, you know, like everything can. Sl- slightly different to this. Yeah, oh, yeah, really. yeah, this is like red posh and nice, you know what I mean? And like, he's <laughs> got all best stuff. And then, but honestly, he's, he's, a, he's probably the best boxing coach, you know what I mean? He's, he got us all in, in fact, he got me into it, he got Wayne into it, he got us all into it, you know, like. All into boxing and stuff yeah, like that, yeah. so it was him who sort of brought it to this area, you know. Uh, so yeah, he's, he's done. He's done a lot of good, even though I could talk shit about him. He has done a lot of good, but Chuck Finale is just nuts. You know what I mean? He's like, <laughs> but, uh, I didn't know this podcast was going to be so. Yeah, sorry, sorry, sorry no, no. It's unbelievable. I probably reeled off on wrong stuff, but, but you know what I mean? He's just, <laughs> yeah, he's just, he's oh just crazy. He's a crazy kid. Uh, so you so you got into kickboxing first, didn't yeah. you? Like the freestyle kickboxing. Freestyle boxing. kickboxing, yeah. Okay. Competed at that, and then uh, I think it was. I used to have this crazy trainer called Pete Ethan. He was like, right. he was like, he'd like. I can remember like a, I like I wasn't even mature, you know, like I was probably fourteen year old, and he'd like get us running. We like bin liners on and stuff like that. He'd make us do a ten mile run, and then it's a rate you've got to do. And then make you do a five hundred press ups, and obviously your body can't do it, and a thousand sit ups, and you'd be fucked. And then not, then it just knock shit out of you, proper beat you up. It, it, it was good for character building, but brother, you like this character building? Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> it, 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 it like hardened me. Do you know what I mean? So like, no, bothers me. Like, I can, yeah. like, like, like you say, I can't used to throw shit on me at bath <laughs> and put shit in my head. So like, no, like that bothers me. And like, then I've got this like crazy trainer, like. Just used to batter it, so I got used to getting beat up and stuff like that. And, and was he in like, a freestyle kickboxing? He was, yeah, he was a good kickboxer, but he like just disappeared then off off uh, off scene. Like, yeah. but he was, like a red re- cool black guy, like he was like mm-hmm. he was one of them. I always had fancy cars and that. He'd take you everywhere and he'd be like overtaking everything. And we used to look up to him thinking it was cool, but yeah. when I look back now, I thought, oh, God, <laughs> it was crazy. <laughs> you know what I mean? He was, I can remember he battered us. Do you know, like he proper knocked shit out of you? you know? But it made me, like you said, make sure we are, doesn't it? And then, I don't think anything can No, 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 it not phases me now. You know, like, like then it did, but uh, then obviously I got into, like, got into boxing and right. uh, I started boxing with Was him. that because of your brother or just Yeah, because you... okay, he, he got into boxing then. Right. So we started going to a gym up road called Hard and Fast and uh, there was another, like, uh, cool guy there called Fred Gummerson. Okay. And he was like, like typical Rocky trainer, he used to bring you out every pads and that and uh, <laughs> he used to scare me to death, give me like na- you know like it was that scary and you'd like you'd get in boxing rings and uh, they'd be like seven year olds sparring, like knocking shit out of each other and you go, What we're doing is, what we're doing today is I'm weaning shit out. You know like <laughs> and, like it was just like cut throat, you just thought, Jesus <laughs> And I used to always get in with like it, th- there'd be some gypsies there, they were uh, they were they were I think they were called Fred and Penny. Penny were fucking. Yeah, yeah, it's insane, yeah. Penny, yeah. Penny, yeah. Penny, like, he were like my age, but he was fucking re- mature and right. real good boxing. He went pro. Uh, I don't know what happened to him. And then there were Fred, he was a real good boxer. I used to fight spy with Fred. And uh, he, he was like probably four years younger than me, but he used to have some right tear up to him. And he used to put me in with him. And uh, I can always remember he were. I went, he was like, uh, where did I go with him now? I went to. Uh, I went to Holland to box, right? Eh? And Holland? Holland, yeah, I went okay. to Holland. Yorkshire squad. We were like a Yorkshire squad. They said, oh, I'll take you over to Holland. So we went, got pissed up on boat like he did, got told off by boxing coach for screwing up all of the room. And uh, we cut up to all young ones as well. Okay, we got them pissed. They were about 14, got them pissed. It was a great laugh. And uh, I came over boxing and they goes, and they goes, right, you're going to be fighting tonight. Their side, what national side? So like, we were just like a shitty Yorkshire squad. We had yeah. some good boxers. And uh, at the time, but I they were like the cream of the cream crop. Of the crop yeah. yeah, so like, uh, it was nuts. Uh, so we like got there, and he says, uh, he says, right, you're fighting. It turned out the, the lad who I was fighting had like nine fights, nine knockouts. So they pulled me out, so I didn't end up fighting. I said, well, I'll fight, mate. I'd only had one. There's yeah. no way that nine knockouts. And he was like a mature bloke, and yeah, I was yeah, yeah. like a weedy kid. I didn't even have armpit hairs. This, he had like a full beard, <laughs> do you know what I mean? <laughs> so like. <laughs> I was that bad when I used to win because I didn't have armpit hairs. I put my arm like that. I, I, I was that embarrassed about it. I didn't. I don't think I got pills till about twenty-one. And uh, so anyway, we boxed, and I can always remember sharing this room with this Fred, and I'll never forget it, mate. 
I like asleep and I caught him over my bed and I thought, what's he doing? <laughs> and he had his hands like that and all I could smell was shit and he was going to wipe his fingers on me. He didn't wipe his ass. He, he didn't use toilet paper, he used to wipe it. And he, he was like playing tricks on me, trying to like wipe his shitty fingers on me and that. So honestly, it, it, it was a great laugh when he like, was dirty twat, you know what I mean? But it was all like fun and games like so. So I went there. That, so that was a great experience. But they were like a little, uh, oh, wait, I can always remember. They were like... Uh, into Amsterdam, we were like just outside Amsterdam, not far like, mm. but you had to get on like a little boat crossing, which weren't far, probably from here to the other side of the road or a right. bit further, just to get into the centre. And uh, I can always remember this like bloke came up to us, and there was a group of, imagine this a group of boxers, a, a bloke's come up to off his head, he goes, like, I, want, I want you to buy all my drugs to like one of the smallest there. And he didn't realise there were loads of us there, and we all knocked shit out of him on this boat. So it was like his worst day, tried threatening us with a knife. And there were about 10 boxes there, we knocked shit out of him as funny as hell. Well, it serves him right. It serves him right, yeah, so it was good. So that, that was my experience with boxing. So I think, I think I had about nine or ten at boxing or something like yeah. that. In all, I probably had about 100 combat yeah, discipline sure. fights, you know what I mean? But that was that. And then obviously I got into, what did I get into then? Steve, uh, I got in with Steve Adams and did Thai boxing, but Steve were like really good coach, we passed away. So how come you went from boxing to Thai boxing? Did yeah. somebody take you there or how did I you I just like that. I was more, I was more a kicker me, do you right, know what I mean? I could right. box, but yeah. 90% of my career when I like fighting, like when I was fighting for British titles, my shoulder used to come out all the time right, and I like right. having to put it in. I ended up having it operated, I think it was 2006. So right. I always favoured my legs more, yeah, you yeah. know, like, yeah. and then, Obviously, I was doing Thai boxing, and I, I went all over with that. I went to like uh, Portugal for in, in British side, and I got bronze medal. And then I went to Thailand, and uh, that was an experience. That uh, I lost to a big Caribbean kid on points. Uh, but I always remember chuffing. You had Edgar on and like Body Armour because uh, it was like they were trying to get it into Olympics at time. Right, but right. It was, obviously Thai's brutal as well, and it's yeah. dirty, it looks. So dirty. was the Body Armour similar to what Taekwondo's were yeah, in Olympics? Yeah, yeah, but right. it was worse because thing is with Thai as well, you can go from pro to amateur, so all fighting pro, but you could still fight. Oh, well, you can flick down. Yeah, you can. Right. So like the lads there, uh, Belarusians, the guy like they called Shikuta, he had about two hundred fights. He was seven times world pro Thai boxing champion as a pro, but then he went amateur. So like. You could go over there. That I think the limit were like something like three or five pro fight uh, amateur fights. Do you want British side or something like that? Yeah, wow. to have that many. So you could be like a novice fighting someone like that and drop on him and get beat up. Do you know what I mean? So do, like, yeah. so it was a bit brutal in that sense. But uh, I remember fighting this big Caribbean kid, and I'm not, I'm not kidding. The first time I've ever been hit with a hard shot. Yeah. I think I was cruiserweight. So it's come out and he's hit me with his right hand, and yeah. because of Edgar, I couldn't see. And I think it was the first time I've ever had an eight count in my life, it hit me. I touched ground, like touched ground down, got back up. And I jumped up Bruce Lee Gong at the beginning of the film, doing that dung. <laughs> and I heard that, I thought, what the fuck was that? <laughs> so I, I just went back out, scrapping, and I can remember <clears> at <throat> one point in fight, this is I like, I was like, I like went into like a. Normally I'm calm when I fight, I went into like a crazy dog mode, and I can always remember it. I grabbed him in a tie clinch, and I started biting his face with my gum shield in, and I'm thinking, and then going, <laughs> <laughs> I thought, what am I doing here? And like, this is the middle of the fight, sat biting his lip, and I thought, I'm going to fall right now to what? I lost some points anyway, but it was good, it was good, it was good fun. So, <laughs> so did you go to Thailand just to compete, or just to train? Just to compete, just to like out there, but just to compete. But I've been there twice, I trained for a, a fight when I was like doing MMA for that, I think it was Daniel Veitch I trained for, who, I think he was Bellator tournament right, champion. Right, right. So I fought him, uh, and I fought him at welterweight, but I went out there to train at, at Fairtex, he was like so, And player. how long did you stick to Thai boxing, and, and how did that go for you? Thai, yeah, I did well with Thai. Uh, do you know something, if I kept it up, I'd probably won world titles and everything, but I just, I know there was something else, you know what I mean? There's yeah, something yeah. missing, I, I'm always like, I always wanted to better myself and like be a yeah. proper martial artist, you yeah, know what yeah. I mean? Not, so then obviously, I met Andy Cooper, the man, yeah. the legend, the myth, yeah. innit? And yeah. uh, I can always remember going down there with a Thai boxing pedigree and he just like, the skinny kid got me back and choked me for a bastard. Is that where our paths cross? Because yeah, I that's remember. how I met you, yeah. yeah, yeah. At, 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 at work, you wasn't it? Yeah, first time I went, it was at Forms Park on no. these old mats and I can remember him strangling me and then there were, <laughs> and then like Brian as well, can you remember Brian? Or like, just looked yeah. like a, it just looked like a, a chuffing mechanic or something right. like that, like with dirty <laughs> underpants on. He used to strangle everyone. I used to think, what the fuck's going on here? I'm getting beat up by that. Uh, so then, obviously, I learnt grappling. So, uh, what era we're talking, that maybe like 20, 
2021, I reckon. Not right. 21, 20, 2001, I started yeah, yeah, MMA. Yeah. So that'd be about 20 years I was 20, going to see. 20 yeah. years, yeah. So wow. then that's when I started that. And then obviously, I'll train you with Andy. Because Andy. there was Andy, there was Mick. Mick, Mick Taylor, yeah. Yeah, he was Who a new guy, man. Who <laughs> Chris, Chris Williams, Gav uh, Keane, Neil Coleman. Yeah, and I don't know if Jesse used to go there or not. Uh, I can't remember that name. Paul James. Yeah, Je- yeah. yeah. yeah cool guy, yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. with dreads, yeah. Yeah, he was cool. I keep seeing him because... Yeah, he messaged me over there, actually. Did yeah, yeah, to get in for his... Well, I said over there probably a year ago, uh, to get some sparring for his son because his son's about uh, an heavyweight in at boxing. Yeah, he... Because uh, he carried on doing it for a that, while that, with that. Mick and he lives close to a place where I go for my coffees and yeah. I'm always bumping into him. Yeah. He's a good yeah, guy. He's a cool guy. Yeah. So Andy Cooper, he... I remember when we used to go train at Andy's, he'd be in the cage... And we'd all have to take turns so with yeah, boxing, and he'd just keep in there. Yeah, like Jorisel putting on it. Good hits as well. I can remember he just used to hit me right over and right. I'd throw him, he'd bang over and right. But yeah. He was like the man who got me into it. Like Clint Eastwood, wasn't he? He was, like, wasn't he? Just, like, cool as all, and just was terrible. Always myself. pleasant. Always. Yeah, nicest bloke ever. Didn't he end up, was he working as a warden or something happened, and he ended yeah. up getting jumped? Something yeah. happened, didn't he? I think he did one indoors, didn't he? So one hit him over Edward Stowell. Yeah. And, and oh, he's had a fight with reform, and that was bad. And then, I don't know, I think he's had a few fights being a warden, like one of the community wardens, I don't know. So, uh, <laughs> yeah. so how, so whilst you were there did you compete under Andy Cooper or oh, competing under Andy but then because it were only like once or twice a week so then yeah. I found a, that's when I found Jiu Jitsu and I found uh, Paul Mark Murphy Neil Owen Neil White and I started going there like yeah, I got yeah. to like blue belt level and I started competing at Jiu Jitsu then and that was that was the next phase I started learning how to grapple because I was just a pure tie boxer me when yeah, I was fighting because yeah. I think my first this is what I mean. A lot of lads now who ain't UFC, they've got padded records. I, of course. My yeah. first fight, I was straight in as a pro. I fought a lad called Sandy Gedder. So we're like, oh, probably had, at the time, he probably had 20 MMA fights. And they were, uh, uh, um, they called it Governor, actually. And they were like uh, PTI and padders. Really? And I can remember fighting in me and I thought, I saw it in me, ball then. And it was me there, like, at the time, I was like a good looking kid, like, <laughs> like now. Obviously, I got older and I look ugly. But, uh, <laughs> And I can remember fighting, and I can remember seeing him in this fight, and he knocked the fucking shit out of this other bloke. And it was like a bloodbath, and Andy goes, Oh, no, I've got your fight. I went, Oh, hey, was Sandy Gedders. I can remember I was shitting myself, thinking, Oh, no, I'm going to get battered. And I was that scared, I fought him, and I, I don't know where it came from. I threw a kick, and he didn't like it. He came at me, he grabbed me, he picked him up, suplex, and choked him, and like choked him. And after that, then. I bet that he, buzz was awesome. Yeah, but it? He, it fucked me up because he was ranked number 18 country as a pro. So my so that's so, just shut, shut up. up in two minutes. I was ranked number eight. So after that, then every fight was hard, you know. So like yeah. it, it, it messed me up. And then uh, this is why my records a bit sketchy. You know, like yeah, everyone yeah. I fought, like I've like fought Bellator champions, I fought Bama champions, I fought Cage Race champions, I fought World Champion. Do you know what I mean? I fought like yeah, uh, yeah. Combat Sambo World Champion, seven times World Champion. Who no one know that as well. Like that one in Jordan, at least that one another. And uh, but. I, I like 20 fights, Ross Pearson, Norman Parks, and I just missed out on getting an Ultimate Fighter, but it Did was you like, really? yeah, wow. I, got, I got auditions, and I just lost to Ross uh, a yeah. couple of weeks before it, but I was beating Ross, and yeah. my biggest problem was fighting with my head, do you know, like, right. I didn't believe in myself at the time, it's, it's weird, like, in my 20s, I was probably gifted, and like, I don't attribute for it, now as I've got older, my body's broke, but, but my here, mindset's yeah. awesome, yeah, so yeah. like, I know now, it's, it's weird, since I've learned how to wrestle off Roy, I know I could get in UFC, and I, I, I truly believe, honestly, I truly believe I could do a title run, yeah, yeah, but yeah. I'm 42 years old, so like, yeah. do I, I'll put everything on hold and go for it, but I probably won't get in because I'm too old now, but like, lads who have training, none of them have like, ever, yeah, yeah. you know, like, like, UFC lads, everything, I've never been out, done by yeah. him, do you know what I mean? You've always been consistent and you've yeah, always yeah. been sharpening yeah. yourself. Like yeah. you said, you, you, there was always something missing so you wanted to add yeah. a bit more, add yeah. a bit more. Yeah, I'm, I'm always searching like, do you know what I mean? And then, then obviously I fell out of love with MMA because I, I had a loss in uh, in Jordan in the Middle East but that, that was a cool place. I thought, uh, this crazy, I think you're a Russian or whatever you are. No one knew all about it so like, I've turned up and he goes, uh, got your fire and sound. I says, I think it was about, I think it came away with about three grand so it wasn't bad like with MMA yeah. and I thought, got a week in Jordan, I took my mate, Jess. And was and the place nice and hospitality it, and everything? It was cool, was yeah, but they were getting searched for bombs everywhere and that, so <laughs> they like, pretty cool, you know, like, and, uh, it was, it was good. Well, the like, thing is, it's a good thing you nicknames the mongoose, not the bloody hand grenade. Yeah, hand grenade, so yeah, so yeah, it was, like, it was a cool place, you know, yeah. weird, but, uh, I can remember getting there and, like, no one knew all about this lad and he, he, he looked apart, he'd, like, 
it was seven times World Combat Sambo Champion. So you're talking, you talking know this. You're talking Fedor level and uh, Khabib level. Do you know what I mean? So and he'd been in with Shemlenko. He'd been in with everyone. He fought all the best guys. And no one knew what they said. Oh, it's twenty nine and five, right? So sound I got him with him. And at the time, I'd like gone away from MMA. I'd like I was trying to get my brown belt in Jiu Jitsu. So all I was doing was ground game. I wasn't doing any wrestling or anything like that. So I got him with him, and I like. I'm kicking him to bits, I'm thinking, fuck it, I'm doing good here, like head kicks, everything will land him perfect, the timing felt good, and he was just trying to box me, I kept kicking him, I thought, fuck it, I'm knocking shit out of him. <laughs> All of a sudden then I thought, I'll try and take him down, I shot him for this lame tech down, because I won't do the rest of the time, he like pushed me on the floor, and he starts unloading, and then what hard shots are like tippy tapping, and I felt this fucking wacky medic like, bang, I thought, what the fuck was that? And he volleyed me in the face, full on in the face, and ref went, are you alright? I went, yeah, I'm sound. And so he stood us back up, didn't give him one point, I don't like that. Proper full on soccer kick me wow. head, like took a penalty with head, which was cool because I'd like probably, a Jose Aldo yeah, kick. I'd have probably done it to be fair, yeah. but it like an instinct kick, yeah. but it fought in like no rules, thing fighting right, all I this understand. type of stuff, yeah, I think. Yeah, yeah. So I get it, you know. At least he didn't bite you face, did no, he, brother? No, no. <laughs> Karma. <laughs> uh, so yeah, so like yeah, so he's volleyed me in head. And then he goes, Are you alright? I went, Yeah, and I thought it'll give me a couple of minutes to like recover. I said, yeah, My yeah. head's a bit foggy. Ref or shit. He went, fight. So he's come storming across the ring, put me against the wall, throw these like, the like, not hard shots, and yeah. I've ended up on the floor. And I felt this fucking whacking head again. I thought, what the fuck? Well, that God he can punch. And it like, I thought my eye socket had come out of my head, it was that bad. And I tapped, I thought, my, do you know, like my eye just yeah, explodes. Yeah. I thought, Jesus, what the fuck was that? And after the fight, I was like, I was, my call, I was, what did you do then? He went, apology in face. Again, I'm like, yeah. Well, I'm winning, I only had like, you know, like, it was first round, I'm winning fight. So yeah. I reckon what he's doing for, he's losing, fucking cheat. And he volleyed me in face, and I, I sort of fell out of love with it. Yeah. Fight game then for yeah. a bit. Uh, and then I met Roy. So I need to just like change my So tell us about that journey because that's quite a significant journey. How you came across Roy Ward and just talked yeah, us through uh, that. What it was, uh, obviously, after MMA, I still, still, I still want to do MMA, but yeah. after MMA, I like thinking, I, I like, you lose that passion, but you know yeah. what I mean? You like lose a passion, you think, what am I going to do? That's all, it's all I know. And I like, I got depressed and stuff like that. And so I like, I went to a Billy Robinson seminar and uh, I think it was Donny, Andy Critton's in the gym. And, and for those that don't know, Billy Robinson uh, is well known in the yeah. catch. Is it catch as catch can catch wrestling? Catch can wrestling. Yeah. yeah, from uh, and he will talk with I Billy Riley. So I got talk. Well, my brother got talk. So into a strong again. strand yeah. between them. Yeah. All, isn't so my brother makes it again. My brother saved my life again. He like uh, says we're the best place to go catch because obviously we were living in America at the time. And uh, did you know what catch as catch can was then? Because you I know never heard of it. Me, Andy told me about it, but I didn't know Andy what it was. Because Andy's, Andy's, uh, I think it was his uncle or his granddad used to train it, but right. Andy wasn't bothered about that side of things. But right. then, like now, he wanted to learn catch. So, yeah. Uh, yeah so anyway, and uh, yeah, so I got talking to him, and he says, "Oh, they're doing it in Wigan after the second thing here." And then I went to, and it was Jake Shannon and all that. Who, who were doing Jake Shannon and Billy Robinson. And Sam Crescent, I think it were doing seminar, and, and, and obviously Billy says, "Oh, it's obviously winning." So I, I, I think it was 2012, so I'm quite late to it, really. Yeah, yeah. Uh, obviously, I started. Rest I'd done a bit of wrestling with Brett, Tommy, Ryan yeah, Lord, yeah. and over at Wide Club and stuff like that yeah. with Dale Money and stuff like that. Probably from like 2008 to 2010, but there was something missing. They were like, "No, what Roy learns is mat wrestling. I think it's the most important thing right. in wrestling. Me okay. uh, call it invisible shit. It's the stuff you don't see." Do you know what I mean? Like the, like getting up and the standing and arm rolling and all that type of crap. But it changed the game completely, do you know what I mean? And I met Roy 2012 and then I just started picking it up then. And and, it, and that's the snake pit, isn't snake it? Snake pit, yeah, yeah. It just changed the game, honestly. So did you end up having to commute then? Yeah, well, I do. Like, everyone thinks I train there. All I do is once a month when there's a seminar on, I used to go over. And I, I used just to once learn. A month? Once a month and I'd learn. And what I'd be doing, everything I'd learn, I come down just here like a and I'd be drilling with lads, yeah. Thing. So like if I'm down here training down here for like uh, 10, 15 times a week, I'd be drilling it with lads. So it's right. like just ingraining in you. It's yeah, like yeah, a, it's a repetitive muscle, in it muscle again, memory, isn't it? Yeah, it's yeah. like it's like you learn how to uh, stop getting suffocated with yeah. shit and stuff like that. You learn how to fight, <laughs> and that, that, that's that, that's what it did. Uh, so yeah, it ingrained in me in my mindset and stuff like that in my body, and it got better and better. And then I met obviously I met Ian Bromley there, and he was showing me stuff. He was like a, a legend as well. So like I was just like learning, and then I started like. <clears throat> Then, because I understood jits as well, I'm getting with like good wrestling guys who were better. Like, I'm not like in Wigan, there's loads of better wrestlers than me, freestyle yeah. guys. 
But what I'd find is when I was wrestling them, I'd submit them with stuff, with sneaky stuff, with jits. Ah, okay. So I like I'll beat them with subs that they not seen. Right. And then we, and then we haven't seen yeah, it, you can't yeah. defend it. And then you? when I started going to jits, I was using wrestling against them. So I thought, that was oh, it. that's good. It's like that? a yeah, bit yeah. of a niche here. Yeah, so yeah. like I'll beat my jits guys with dirty stuff, <laughs> and then like the wrestling guys are beating with sneaky stuff. So <laughs> like I'll like sort of blending it, even though like I'm I, I, I like catch. Yeah. I like it all, as an all. I think I just call it submission wrestling right, right now because like. There's this rift in that moment. Cat wrestling is better than jits. No one's better than other. You just got to both understand both yeah. for what they are. There's lots of submissions off here about your wrestling's your top game in it and stuff like Still, that. The, the rule set the as rule well. Rule set's different. Yes, yeah, it's, it's and that's what I mean. Rule set in America is different to one in Wigan. It's is it like, really? Yeah, oh. It's crazy. In America, you can choke. In Wigan, you can't choke. But if the, if the arms in, so like an arm triangle. Yeah. You, it's like a crank, but you, yeah. you can still choke someone unconscious. So yeah. so in a sense, you can still dart. Because right. arms in, yeah. But, because you're, you're but, but if it were a guillotine, you're not allowed to do it. I but then you fight on Chris Crossland's show up in uh, Newcastle, you can choke. So it's, I yeah. prefer chokes, me. But I like the pinning as well. But do you know, like if I lost by a pin, I'd be gutted. Or if I won by a pin, I'd be yeah, gutted because yeah. you know you're saying you could slip on Matt, someone lay on you, and it's over and that's that's it, Yeah, so, yeah. Yeah. So, well, I came across uh, Catcher's Catch Can when uh, Roy's daughter Andrea. Andrea yeah. She got in touch with me uh, about the, the late Ian Bromley, yeah. uh, God rest his soul, when he yeah. passed away. Yeah. And she was doing this kind of memorial thing yeah. for him. And she got in touch with me and said, look, yeah. can you come and MC? There's going to be like a, a bit of a tournament, yeah. but we want it to be all around Ian. And I said, yeah, of course yeah. I will, you know. And then she wanted, um, there's a guy called Luke Ambler who runs Andy's Man Club yeah, in yeah, Calderdale. Like, yeah. And I knew him, right, because back in the days when he was 14, we used to train with Les Allen. Yeah, the he was some boy, wasn't he? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> if you haven't seen the podcast of Les Allen, but he's, he's a character. You know when you mentioned about doing the uh, 500 squat or press yeah, yeah, he went he used to, to Lions Den, yeah, yeah, Lions Den, Well, he went there and he did, because uh, he talks about on the podcast, he went where there was Ken Shamrock, yeah. Fan Shamrock, he did all that. But then when he came back, he did it on us, bro. Yeah, yeah. Right, so we'd go to the body station, and uh, some days everything would be cool, and other days he'd say, right, you're doing uh, 500 press-ups, tiger press-ups, 500 squats, 500 yeah. leg raises. Yeah. And we were like, brother, we're paying for this. What are you making us do all yeah, this? Yeah. But for him, that's yeah, what yeah, his yeah. way of like character yeah. building. So I ended up uh, going to uh, the uh, place, the snake pit, where they did the tournament. Yeah. Uh, was it in Bolton or Bolton? Yeah, Bolton. Bolton yeah, yeah, stadium, wasn't it? Yeah, yeah. I think it was the Reebok Stadium. Reebok stadium. Yeah, yeah. 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 It was really cool. But the, the eye opener for me was the rule set. It's it kind of caught me because although I was there as an MC, yeah. you, you, you're as close as you can get to it. Yeah. And I think did I see you there? Yeah, that's well? right. Oh, yeah, because yeah. you've not seen it for a while. And it was really cool to see like a different rule set because it's all about like neck cranks and yeah. like really twisting yeah. everything, you know, which yeah. is completely opposite to oh, what yeah. jujitsu yeah. is. Because jujitsu yeah. is about you can't manipulate yeah. the yeah. spine. Like jujitsu, they call it gentle art, don't they? And yeah. I suppose cats, are, cats is like jujitsu on steroids. It is, isn't it? Like just like you trying to break they just someone. Grab yeah. someone, they're yeah. trying to twist yeah. until it snaps. Yeah, but I think you've got to have it both, mate. Do you know, like just to understand it. It's just yeah, like, but yeah. It, and and uh, the thing is, like Roy's kept it going, yeah. you know, and Andrea, you know, yeah. she's kept yeah. it going. Do you know what I mean? I think recently they had uh, another loss as well, where somebody yeah, else. Yeah, two more, mate. Two more. Really? Two more. Yeah. Uh, there are a lot who train there, and then obviously um, Lewis as well. Yeah, 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 so yeah, yeah. Yeah, so they've had a few. They all seem to be thinking, but do you know the funny thing is, mate? Um, at time, when Ian Bromley was, when he was in a bad place, Ian used to text me all the time with funny jokes right. and stuff like that, because he yeah. had a sixth sense of young man, a cool guy. A bit similar to me, really. <laughs> uh, in fact, we were very much alike, people who say you like, and we just gelled, it was weird, like, we just yeah. gone on from instant minute. Mm. At the time when Ian was texting me, I was in a bad place, mate. Right. And I, I didn't know me. Uh, basically, I was in a shit place at work. Like, management were doing me anything, and I was going to kill him. And uh, I'd had concussion, but I, I didn't know all that concussion, mate. I'd, yeah. like, I'd be down here sparring every day, and I'm getting hit with jabs, and I'm like thinking, fucking hell, I can see light, I'm hearing noises, I'm getting angry, I'm, I can't sleep, I'm this, I'm that. And then I came home one day, I went out and I was brought down to our last and I went, I went, I'm not going to work. And she goes, what's up? And I, but uh, even to this day, I ain't even told her. Yeah. I, I had depression. I, walk, I came in walking out, it wasn't longer than this, probably when Ian Bromley died. I was walking out woods with dog thinking, right, I'm going to hang myself in a tree. And it was like, oh, fucked up. And uh, <clears throat> what saved me, do you know, like, it was crazy. I left my job, got a new job, like, for council. Even though I loved my job, I left, like, and just management hated me. And it was just like, I'd like, I all, at the time, I didn't realise all the training, a concussion and just like it was just I was just in a dark place and you don't realise yeah, it at the time yeah. and I fucked up 
And uh, maybe that overtraining was just to not think yeah, about the diet. Yeah, but right, I think it was just it just wear and tear, just get brain on edge. You know what yeah, I mean? Yeah. And that film, uh, Concussion, I watched that and I thought, fucking hell, this is me. So obviously, I moved my job, so I was in a better place then. I started realizing I had concussion, so I stopped doing that. And then obviously, Bromley died same week because I was like, think so. It's weird. It was like, you were right close to it. Yeah, we were both in sync. And I can remember going to his funeral and what did me, I saw his daughter walking down, Jesus, with dogs, because they had staffs, walking out with dogs and I thought, and all I thought then about my daughter, I thought, I'll never think like that again, and it changed my way of thinking, like, because at the time you don't, you don't realise that you're fucked up, do you know what I mean? You see, that affected me when I was doing that uh, yeah, announcement yeah. and stuff, his daughter were there. Yeah. And, you know, like, giving her stuff and, you know, talking to her and, and everyone was having yeah. a chat with her. And I kept looking and thinking, yeah, you know, so what is she going it's through? It's weird, isn't it? It's weird, but I've had loads, like, I've had, I've had a few of my mates do the same thing. I had uh, one of my mates, Mick, growing up, he was like, he was in that scene when we used to go out egging and, like, right. throwing stuff. Mm. He shot his in his own house, in his dad's house. Uh, so he blew his head up. Then there's been another lad around here, Dave Evans, uh, over at Benin's, same again. Like, there's, in this area, you know, because it's a shit area, it's like a mining village. Right. It's out of drugs or going out and getting pissed and yeah. stuff like that. So I get it in a sense, you know what I mean? Like why they do it, but it's just like I've been in that dark place and I'm not going back, you know what I mean? Yeah. And I think when I remember Luke doing a, a talk, that Luke Ambler, yeah. and he described it in three phases. You're either in that dark place or you're in that storm. Yeah. You have to deal with it because yeah. at some stage that storm's gonna be behind you. Yeah. Yeah. So you're out of that dark place or there's a storm coming. Yeah. So you're always gonna yeah. have to face I always that felt weather. like I had like a black cloud over my head, but it's where that like I'm like an happy-go-lucky guy, mate. I'm yeah. always happy, and it's normally that. This is what I found, mate, because yeah. I'm always like, I'm not a fake person or like that, but I'm always happy and I'm always buzzing, but when I'm low, I'm low, when I'm high, I'm high. Yeah, and yeah. I went through that patch when I didn't get an ultimate fighter. It, like, do you know, like, you find that dark place, and I think I think it's with fighting as well, like, the eyes high and the lows are low, and, yeah. and I, I get that, do you know what I mean? And this is why I get all these, like, top fighters, like, uh, so like they all go off rails, don't they? You know, like Kalzaki got done for drugs and stuff yeah, like that. Yeah. You've got to think of it like this. They've all their life is diet, fight, this, yeah, this. Yeah. They ain't gonna hurt, they ain't took drugs, they ain't party. And they get somewhere and they think, I've got to find another eye. And that's yeah. what it is. Once you've reached the the world title pinnacle, what is there? There's no universal yeah, title, yeah. you're coming down. Yeah. I, and you but, keep trying to yeah. get back up. But there. like now I set me some new goals, like <clears throat> cats were my new goal. So like now, I wanna go over to America and beat that current Jacobs. I don't want to beat that uh, Quinton just to set the legacy. But everyone's probably looking at me thinking I'm a 42 year old man, and these are like young kids. But and like I think uh, Curran's an NCAA in there, something like that. Right. It's like obviously Trump's a better wrestler than me. I know he is, yeah. but I know if I grab his leg or I grab his head, I'm gonna submit him. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? I know I'm gonna pull something off. But it, 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 there's that excitement there because I know he can pin me at any time and I can submit him. So yeah, yeah, this yeah. is what this is the match I want. I just want to set my legacy. Do you know like? I don't want to be one of these who like goes to a grave and dies. I want to fall into my grave like a battered up beetle <laughs> with like wheels yeah. hanging off. You know what yeah, I mean? Yeah, like you're I'm, right, you're I right. like I've lived. You know what I mean? And, yeah, I, I, and, and, and that's what I want. But it, it makes it more fun because it's like fell through twice this uh, match. You know, like right. first time we were supposed to wrestle, it was in Wigan, and uh, he wouldn't wait below me. I think he was in under. I think. He, Something like it goes from eighty to ninety, ninety to hundred, like in every weight. Right? Yeah. I was ninety-one kilograms. I'm not losing a kilogram to like a weight division below. I like I like the food, do you know what yeah. I mean? <laughs> so like I thought I may as well wrestle every weight, do you know what I mean? And he was wrestling weight below, and he says, "Why don't we have a super match, me and you?" I goes, "Yeah, I'll do my tournament, and you do your tournament." So technically, he already a world title in America. If he'd have won that world title at night at middleweight, and I'd have won it at heavyweight. And then his titles, well, that's three titles up for grabs, really. And that's like, like the, the all ultimate title. And then we no, 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 what happens if you get injured in tournament? I said, well, we'll wrestle at the beginning of the night, put your finger, and then we'll do tournament. No, no, no. It's me and you. And I like thinking, right. well, I want to set a legacy. I want to be like, win three world titles, you know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. And they're like, talks between Angie and uh, Roy. And then, it never came, it never came. And he put like a, no disrespect to him, he's like, he's a bit like Conor McGregor, likes to sell things, like right. because he's good, uh, stuff like that, so uh, he uh, basically, he put like, because he's good with media, because he's an actor as well, he put this media thing out there and he put something like, uh, basically turned around to me and said, uh, I think Roy and Andrews don't want to, don't scared of you wrestling me, I went, why are they scared of me wrestling you, they want me to do the title, the tournament first, then wrestle you, yeah. to me that's full confidence yeah, in yeah, it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But then what happened, why well, he didn't come, and uh, 
I had Josh Barnett will come in and I goes to her, I goes to her, I goes, I goes, if you can't get anyone to wrestle him, I'll wrestle him. She goes, what do you mean, I went? She goes, he's about, I think what's the weird difference between crazy. you and... Crazy, he was warm in 17 and I, I think on night I weighed in at 89 on that tournament on, on 91 <laughs> or something like that. And I says, I said, I'll rest him. He goes, it's like 50 pounds a day. I went, I don't care. And for like, those that don't know, Josh Barnett, yeah. uh, he's been at UFC, yeah. he's had loads of Nobody fights. He's been champion yeah. at the time, yeah. and like, that's what I mean. He was like, the man. at one point, like, well, probably when yeah. I wrestled him, it was like, he bet Dean Lister, hadn't he? So he bet Dean Lister, uh, he just lost to Gordon Ryan, so I'm not saying he wanted at his peak, or like, Gordon Ryan's awesome, isn't he? Uh, but like, I'm just a scruffy kid from... From Caden Hill changing his shed, and they're like, these are training. This is what makes the laugh at us. It's all oh, when you train, you train with NCAA champion. No, I train him in shed with like rugby players and shit like that. I just like it rough, you know. And uh, this is what makes me laugh when everyone going like, and I, I wrestled him and I went distance with him. Yeah, we're like, for you people who don't, with yeah, Josh. yeah, people who don't understand wrestling, ninety percent of it's hand fighting. You, you know when right, it's yeah. grappling, it, and it looks boring. It never, never hit ground, but like. Virtually everyone he fought is took down. This is an heavyweight or what? Youngest heavyweight champ. And he were, at the time, he were like the Mike Tyson at Grappling yeah, World. Like, yeah. like, Brother, really, let's talk about his legs and his hip. Because yeah, I amazing. remember watching the clips and thinking, damn, yeah, yeah. big guy, wasn't yeah. it? Well, my game plan with him was just to tie up with him, drag him into deep waters, because I know I'm fit, mate. Mm. Drag him into deep waters, get him like, blowing in it. I could, I, I, as that's what it sounds, I felt him getting frustrated. I, I know it's not like, it's just little body mechanics. You know, like yeah. when you wrestle someone and uh I'd tie up with him and then disengage and like I'd be touching his legs to say and, yeah, yeah. and he put his hands on his hips and that, like, that was, yeah, put his yeah. hands on his hips and went as if to say come on like yeah. straight away when he did that then well, that's beautiful, I, I knew yeah. he probably don't think this but I knew I was frustrating him yeah, yeah. and with frustration comes anger yeah. and with anger comes other mistakes yeah, and yeah, this yeah. is what I did I, uh, that was my game plan to like get inside his head like this this nobody in a sense because to him like He's, done, he's like, he was my hero, him growing up, him and Ken Shamrock and Sakuraba. I'm just a black belt kid who's like, grafted in my shed, not, not mm. special, all like that. I just had it hard way, been beat up, had shit bags put on my head and <laughs> stuff like that. Pull kills up my ass, well, yeah, man. But, I just like, th that's that's why I am, I'm just like, I like it hard and rough and horrible. Mm. And uh, like, and I just wanted, and then my game plan was, last minute, take him down. And obviously I grabbed his leg. I don't like grabbing a buffalo. <laughs> I like looked at his legs, I thought his legs are skinny, I grabbed him like, I, like <clears throat> I thought, fuck me. Do you know what I mean? I couldn't, I couldn't move him. Then, he shot in at my leg, right? And this goes, I, there's a, you see this in five. He gets my leg up in air, and I'm quite flexible, man. He gets my leg up in air, really high up in air. And your little foot's still on floor? Still on floor, and I got him in a guillotine, right? And I, no, I'm not bragging off about anything. I truly believe I've got a world class guillotine. Everyone's neck mm. I grab, it's getting yeah. pulled off. Yeah. And I've got a guillotine on, right? And it ran there and my leg up and I could feel him. <laughs> but the thing is, with cats, you're not allowed to guillotine in, in UK. Oh. So, right. whether I would so have... So did you have to release that then? I had to release it, yeah. And this it, this is exactly in the match. So I'm going in a guillotine like that. I'm not saying I'm betting, but it were on. And yeah. I know when I've got a guillotine on, your yeah. head's coming yeah, off. Yeah, I'm not yeah, letting go. I'm yeah. like a pit bull. I'm just going for it, yeah. And uh, I got on his leg, a leg and I'm like a, a serial killer on it. Like, locked on it. And I thought, fuck, you can't guillotine. So I've let go. And then Buzzer went, he like threw me, he got, he got, you see it, like froze my leg. He didn't get arsey with him, but threw my leg and I think yeah. he thought, because I guillotined him, do you know what I mean? Yeah, and yeah, yeah. I, I thought, yeah. if it had been a jujitsu match, I'd have pulled down and I'd have had it, do you know? Yeah. I know it's like hypothetical and stuff like that, but yeah, so that was my experience with Josh. But it, after that, like, everyone likes saying, who's he seeing Jones? And this like, exactly, it's like, yeah, yeah. like, when you read comments, everyone saying, oh, shit, he's doing no. They don't understand, like, the armchair what it is, aren't they, do you know what I mean? Yeah, of course. So, but that that was my experience with him. But after that, it made me realise I thought you you don't realise when you're scared, and nervous, and stuff like that, you, you can perform better. So I like being scared. But yeah. I, to say that, I wasn't even scared because I know to lose. I like laughing and joking through it. So I wasn't even scared. It was just to me, it was fun. I thought if he gets on top of me, he's going to crush me. But <laughs> I thought I'm just going to go in with a bit of game plan, use my speed, take yeah, him down, yeah. see if we can take him down and, and win by a takedown. But realistically, like you said, like I said to you earlier. In wrestling, if it's evenly matched, a tournament, the, in, in like freestyle wrestling, and it's a draw, the guy who's the lightest wins. So in my, right. in my, in my eyes, I won. Even though like no one submitted each other, yeah, it's yeah. like it's a win for me because he was who he was. He was like a god. He was a god, like a man standing on like soldier standing on, yeah, yeah, uh, yeah, on yeah, a giant's sure. uh, shoulders, a giant's in it. Yeah, and yeah. To me, I'm just like a kid, a scrubber from <laughs> Kirby. Me, it was like <laughs> been brought up on streets. You know what I mean? And had it hard. You know what I mean? So like. 
I mean, is that the same rule set with catch as catch can? Is that the same as well? Where if someone's lighted and it gets to a draw, it should be. Yeah, it should right. be. Do you know why? Because it's it's Isn't like it's like that. You it, see it, in the Olympics it, as well. It, it, Olympic, Olympic wrestling it is be so. It should be similar to that. But it's like at moment, there's that many different branches and right, areas. Right. I need to. So I know they're not going to merge together. together. They're so not going to merge together. Isn't? Yeah, it's politics. But there should be yeah. like one rule set. I think they should allow. I like chokes. I don't always say that. I think they should allow chokes because I'm good at chokes. But yeah. they should allow the pin. They should allow the choke. But the crazy thing is, you could have a kimura on and you can pin yourself. It's over. Right. Yeah, you yeah, oh, so, of course. Yeah, or yeah, a yeah. leg lock. Yeah. If you're back it back and they put the hands on you, you're pinned. So it's like right, right. It's uh, it's good. But I just see it. You've got to do it all. It's all like submission wrestling, isn't it? That's so for you, you'd prefer something where it's a mixture of catches, yeah. catch, kind of, and yeah, yeah, submission. I like ADC rules, <coughs> but I love catch because I want to help catch grow in this country. Do you know, like yeah. I want to keep it alive. So I'm like, I show everyone it. Do you know what I mean? And people are like, I like put stuff on internet, internet. I'm getting people saying, where, where are you learn this and this and that. And what I'm doing, I'm like, I can see it. I can see. Sometimes I blend my own shit, but yeah. a lot of times I teach a lot of Roy stuff that I showed me. Well, for me, when I first came across this, yeah. uh, and I looked into it, and I thought, what a cool heritage this has got yeah. here. You know, I yeah. didn't know in this country. Guy, it's that guy. That's what I mean. But it, it originates yeah. from here. But you know, over here, it, no one gives a fuck about me. No, no one like, oh, it's a will, like I'm a catch wrestling world champion. No one knows me. Do you know what yeah. I mean? But in America, I'm getting lads texting me from all. Honestly, lads texting me, can I come train with you? And I'm like thinking. I'm just a scrubber. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Look at shed. Look at that shed. Where do you train? <laughs> in this shit hole. Oh, it's got dog pubes everywhere. It's like, you roll up mats here, it's like you've been in hairdressers. It's horrible, yeah, but yeah. It's, I like it. Do you know what I mean? This is, uh, do you know what I mean? It's yeah, so let's talk about your accolades in Catcher's Catch. Kind of like, you know, what tournaments did you do and what belts did you achieve uh, in uh, there? Uh, catch. Obviously, yeah. I'm a black belt in jits and stuff like that. Yeah. I've like one nagger and stuff like that and a few like, over like so he's not the no gi is no, it no no gi yeah, yeah, yeah. That's, that's what I prefer I, I like I can grapple in a gi but I prefer no gi I just yeah. think it's more fast and yeah. stuff like that more fun even though I'm getting older I just feel yeah, the, yeah, I feel yeah. the athletic peak now it's yeah. weird well the thing is even though you're getting older, yeah. there'll be those that you'd be competing if they're a similar age. Yeah. If you've got that bit of yeah. speed, it'll stand yeah. in good stead. Well, I it? think what it is with me, I'm very lucky because I work in a gym and I train yeah. all the time. And that yeah. way I see it, most lads get to 26 year old, right? Yeah. They live the lifestyle of fucking drinking, smoking, taking drugs. I've never yeah. done that. Nearly did, <laughs> but never did. So uh, I see it like this. I've lived a clean lifestyle. Even yeah. though I eat shit and stuff like that, I'm not really in every way, yeah. but... I am athletic and I feel yeah. strong and I feel yeah. at my best now and uh, it's weird, I, I, I want to be like Bernard Hopkins at Grappling World and oh, Randy yeah, Couture, yeah, yeah. you know like, because I work in a gym so all I do is train, I, I get paid for training all day like yeah. with kettlebells, spinning, so my fitness level's just as good as a young kid's, yeah, yeah. do you know what I mean? So then when I get up match with like 18 year olds or 20 year olds, yeah, yeah. lads who've been at UFC, I hold my own against them and I, to yeah, be fair, yeah. Very rarely I get touched. I mean, I do make mistake every now and then, get submitted and stuff like that. But it's very rare, and I think that's what saved me. My athleticism yeah, yeah. And, and like I've got a wise head on my shoulders now. And father, time's not allowed here. Yeah, it? no, it's not allowed, <laughs> mate. It's some bullshit to number, isn't it? Yeah. <laughs> it is brilliant. It I, is. You're I'm right. Peter Pan. I'm Peter <laughs> Pan. Yeah. But that. But this is another thing, right? If you tell yourself you're getting old, what happens? You get old. Yeah, you want. I, I hang about. It sounds like a paedophile here. I hang about with young kids, don't no, I? No, you're right. And I keep that young spirit at work. Everyone thinks I'm younger than I am because I act that. Yeah. But I hang about with young people. You're and it keeps you, keeps you right. young. If you want to be a millionaire, I hang about with millionaires. Yeah, when yeah, you're young, exactly. you hang about with young people. Yeah. And I think that's what it is. I'm around young people and I believe I'm young. Yeah. And uh, I think once you start saying I'm old, I'm injured and this and that, I get up in the morning, yeah, I've got to stiffen out my legs. But I felt like that since I was 12 years exactly, old, like yeah. training, I felt shit. But once I've had a coffee and I get on mat, I'm like, uh, I feel like uh, Mozart, do you know what I mean? Yeah. <laughs> Everything flows. <laughs> Rough as hell, right, bro? Yeah. So, so uh, like, what weight categories were that you competed yeah. in, you, you, you got belts in? Mi uh, what weight? Martial arts? No, with the catch. catcher's catch. So yeah. I did middleweight, I won middle, middleweight British title. Uh, and the difference between that and MMA when it comes to middleweight, so MMA is 84, I think, is the, the, yeah. the ceiling with middleweight. It's like 90. But is 90. it? With, so right. middleweight's 90. Then I did light heavy, which might have been like just above 90. Right. And then I've won heavyweight, so I won, so I won two at state pit British titles, which were middleweight and heavyweight title. Hmm. Uh, then I went on to LPW, which is Chris Crossland's tournament, which hmm. is a really good tournament. I did that, and I think I won there. Was it light heavyweight? I think that was light heavyweight title. And if that were a great match. I had a lad with uh, Chris Holborn. It were like, right. but the rule set were different. It were like three 12 minute rounds, right? 12 minute rounds? Three round. 12 minute rounds. So 
if you win a round, so say if I'd have got pinned and gone into the second round, or say if I'd have submitted them and gone into the second round, so technically you could win by submission, but you've still got to do another three, two rounds. So it's weird. So like, first round it went 12 minutes. The second round, because I know I'm a sambo guy, I got his back out. I dominated him to be fair, a lovely kid but he tough as nails mm. and I got his back and I didn't want to put my legs in because I know he was good at sambo so I thought I got to the last five seconds of round I got me up to him and I thought right I'm just going for a choke and I got him in a choke and beat him so it was like 11 minutes 55 and then it went into the third round so the 36 minute match it was fucking awesome honestly oh, yeah. it was like you know where you just like that sweaty and everything sliding it was yeah. like one of them matches and I'm picking up slamming but it's a, you can't simulate that it's no, such a cool it, it feeling horrible. and it? afterwards it was harder than any, any MMA fight because like with jits you, you can pull guard you can hold, yeah, you can hold yeah. positions wrestling you can't because you, if you pull guard you get pinned or submitted yeah. catch you constantly moving and yeah, it's yeah, like yeah. it's like a battle of chess yeah. And, and I beat him and then I had another match with another kid uh, from uh, Wigan and we had a, a match what we did Roy says right I want it old school like olden days he says we used to wrestle on field he is old school yeah. isn't he? he said we're going to wrestle on school field like this <laughs> football field right I'm not kidding I looked at football field they were dog shit they were chuffing cans bottles I'm thinking what the fuck we're wrestling on here it red hot summer's day so floor hard and I'm thinking we're fucking wrestling on that I'm going to die from disease uh, so Fucking, I had shit on me wrestling ball and everything, it was horrible. But I wrestled, we had like, there were four in my weight category, there were Thomas Hilton, who was a fucking absolute beast, really good freestyle wrestler uh, under Royce, he's been winning from a young age, he lives in Australia now, and his sister's a champion as well. So they were in, there were a, a South African guy, Tyrone Smith from Ian Bromley, he was a cool kid, he was good. Matthew wore a wrestler all the time, Matthew Johnson. And then there were another kid, I forgot his name now, Tams, I forgot, some of Tams, really nice kid, he, he was from Ian Bromley's. So I got on, picked one up, neck cranked him, picked another one up, neck cranked him, picked another one up, neck cranked him. And Thomas just like, well, just wrestling everyone, pinning him, yeah? and I'm thinking, all I'm thinking was, he's not taking me down, <laughs> pinning me in dog shit, no way. <laughs> yeah. And I looked at his feet, mate, this is God's honest truth, and we had red big feet, and I thought, he's got wrestling boots on. And I go see him, Bromley, I goes, Ian, I goes, this is how it's going to happen. I says, he's a better wrestler than me. I know he is. I says, he's going to shoot in at me and take me down. I'm going to grab his foot and snap it. I didn't did intend to do it. He went to fucking... Because mm. I was well, that scared because I thought, I don't want to lose. I'm like, in zone. Do you know what I mean? In zone. I didn't want to lose. He shot in at me, grabbed his foot, rolled, told him, screamed, and did his ankle. I didn't mean to do it like, but his ankle like went and I thought, fucking hell. So I won all four submission, all matches by submission, yeah. So this was the... Uh, this the dog shit field of doom, whatever you want to call it. Yeah. Well, the build up to they had a show at Bolton Arena yeah, for the British title. So whoever won the most matches wrestled at Bolton, right? So obviously he won three, Thomas by pin, right? Mm -hmm. I won like three by submission and dog shit show. <laughs> so I got back with him, right? But the, the thing is, right? He had a really poorly brother, and I felt, and uh, he died about a week before a fight or something. And I, 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 I like gutted, I thought, ah, the two Thomas was going to turn up here. Crazy Thomas was just going to die on Matt, mm. or uh, Thomas who's not going to fight because yeah. he's had his ankle. Like in Ju this was July when I did his ankle and didn't have to wear crack. And I thought it would have a brock or ligament damage. It takes a long time to recover. I was going to pull out and I'm thinking I'll probably pull out and I wouldn't be sat by default even though in my eyes I wouldn't British default that day on field eh? yeah. <laughs> they should have given me a plaque with dog shit on it <laughs> but so yeah so that happened so I got on that way and I'm not kidding it was the hardest match I've ever had in my life honestly it came in shot I dominated all the way through I'm on top of him all the way through I can remember at one point I spewed up in his hair with a harder match honestly I spewed up in my mouth and a bit came out and went in his hair I was like burping <laughs> And they called me on to Matt's and I just had a free, this is probably why I spewed up, I had a free course meal before I got on Matt's, so my belly went out here and I thought, fucking hell, spewed up on him, I'm burping, fighting, everything, you name it. And uh, first round, first round was a 20 minute round, right? 20 but minutes? But I dominated all the way through, right? This, I was on his back all the way through for 20 minutes. And I thought, surely they're not going to make me do another round. And I don't... I don't know if they wanted him to win it because they're a snake pit lad as well. Because mm. I'm not, I'm a snake pit lad, but he's been there all yeah, the time. Yeah, so I'm sure. like thinking, I've always felt, I love Ryan and Andrea, but I always, I don't, not like they're pushing out or anything like mm. that. I will think like, because they're their lads, they've been there longer than me that they might want their sure, lads to no, win. They're, pro yeah. they're probably done, it's probably just me because I'm a paranoid freak. Uh, 
and I've got a phobia of red bags and pool kills. <laughs> but I got on his back and I can remember I had a, had a full on cross face on his back. He was flat out like that. And his neck, it was like sort of exorcist. What, his, just spinning? Just Yeah. His mum, his sister and his dad were there, like there. And I had him and honestly the blood coming out of his face, he was flat out like that and I was neck cranking him. And I thought, and he was screaming going, Aah! it was like some kind of a movie, right? And, and all I could hear was his mum and his sister and his dad going, do it for, I, I don't know what his brother's name was, do it for so-and-so. Oh, and he was screaming, I'm thinking, I'm going to have to break his fucking neck in front of his mum and dad. And I'm like, put it on, I'm like, I'm thinking, I can't break his neck, surely. Honestly, it was on, he's like, do, you know when someone's on. Yeah. And he wouldn't tap, and I, I let go. Fuck me, I let go, he came at me then. I Why thought, did you let go? I don't know, because I thought, I'm going to break, it, 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 yeah. all that to that and his neck was gone. But, I did. It would. I knew it would cause him damage. I yeah, thought he'll be yeah. in a wheelchair. Yeah. Fuck me. And it like last ten seconds of shot him, and like I just ended up on top again. But that was the hardest match ever. I can remember afterwards. I was just like laying up that, and I just had jelly babies. You know, like the blood sugars just dropped. <laughs> oh, it was horrible. But it was one of the most like that and Chris Holman match. One of the most challenging matches I've ever had. It like made me mentally strong. Do you know what yeah, I mean? Yeah. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. Like they always say, don't you? When you fight, you leave something in. Yeah. When I fought Mick Sinclair and, and we had an absolute war on, um, Was that in MMA? MMA, yeah, Sinclair, and, yeah. and, and uh, Michael Holmes as well. What it Michael Holmes or Holmes? You always... A uh, party of soul... Uh, people don't understand this. You leave something in ring. A yeah. party of soul and you get this bond and I just think you leave something in ring. Party stays in that ring after that night. On them mats that night, I left something in ring and it, it gives me goosebumps talking about yeah, it. But yeah. there was just something in, in that thing. And, but it's same way, Wade. Every time I wrestle Wade... I also say Wade's a better wrestler than me, and this and that technically is, but I've bet him, I've had a draw with him, but which, he won't will title, but it didn't in my eyes, because it was like dodgy, no, not dodgy, it was just rule set one, they didn't have rules right, first fight, I beat him out, wrestled him out, and like, I could have subbed him, second fight, I went out, because I thought my dad would die, and he had uh, COPD, and I, basically I thought my dad would die, and he was in a bad way, so I went out and I've never wrestled with intentions of doing something for someone. Like, I can remember saying to my dad, Dad, I'm going to win a world title for you. And I've never done that. You know, like, I'm close yeah, to my dad, but yeah. I've never said out like that. And I had intent- I had a reason to be on there. Yeah. And I took it into deep waters and I took him down. I got his back and I I should have subbed him, really. I just left it a bit early. I got his back and we went. But, like, he's, he's not my nemesis. Do you know, like, you've got to have, like, a nemesis in wrestling, yeah, 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 yeah. Cause, like, it's like Ali had form and Fraser. Yeah, yeah. I, my nemesis is to me right like now are like Curran Jacobs like, uh, uh, I love what they're doing Curran Jacobs is it uh, Wade's like like if if there's no competition in it, it, it you need competition in it yeah, to fly yeah, sure. so it was him and there's uh, that really good guy I can't I can never pronounce his name Quint- Quinton Rosenberg he's fucking awesome as well he beat Curran they're like my I just want to be tested against best and, and like, these are all catch catch guys is there well, yeah. He can wrestle that Quinton, but he beats Curran with Jiu Jitsu. He's a Ten Planet guy as well. He's got some funky submissions. He's really good. <clears throat> big dude as well, big strong dude. And he's like really super technical. And to be fair, I'll be my hardest match him. Uh, he's really good, but I just want to wrestle him. It's like, I don't want to go to my grave not being tested against. Best yeah. like when, when I wrestled uh, Barnett, I, I know that I can stand. And this is what made me realise I thought, if I can hold me same way in. It was like Mike Tyson at grappling world. I can, yeah. like, on a good day, I can beat anyone. On a bad yeah. day, I can lose to anyone. And same with Thai boxing. I did it with Thai boxing. I fought Gary McAllister. He had 100 fights, European champion and stuff like that. He won me in. I went distance with In fact, he beat Andy Cooper and Paul Perkins. Right, okay. He knocked out Andy and beat Paul Perkins. So, like, they were my era. So, I thought, if I can go distance with him and beat him, I'd like... Do you know what I mean? I've, yeah. I've done something. I've achieved something. And, and it, that was the same so way. What's it? Pipeline now, brother, in first uh, match? I want to wrestle... First of all, I want to wrestle Curran, not because he's been calling me out for years, but mm. Quinton's guy to beat, me and Quinton, it's like, it's weird because there were some ratings over there and I like ranked number two and I think, fuck me, scrub a kid from Curran, he's <laughs> ranked number two in Will at, at Cats, like in America it's pretty big over here, yeah. shit, you know what I mean, like no one knows about it, but like, so that's a good thing just to say, yeah. oh I've been like a world champion, yeah. but I want to, I want to wrestle him, I want to wrestle Curran, I know one of my mates, Dave Fortner, you know Dave yeah, Fortner? Know, yeah. He messaged me a bit ago, he goes, there's a chance you're wrestling Sakuraba. And he no. was there, and he sent me, and he says, and then... The what, greatest layer. Yeah, but he says, keep it quiet, and, uh, yeah, so all that as well, and, uh, but that fell through, so God knows what happened, but we had one at Gracie's down at Snake Pit, and it was really cool, uh, Elliot Gracie, who bet Sakuraba. Right. And, uh, 
and we've done a documentary and that was pretty cool we've got like I didn't grapple with me because I got pissed up night of four and that but I wrestled with well Sakuraba likes to drink as well didn't he bro but lads that wrestled with him did really well like yeah. like you think oh grace it's this yeah. mate they're at that level trust me they'll throw yeah, it around yeah, and, yeah. Uh, it were even so yeah it was like it was good to see what like, obviously the gear be totally different but like no gear they're like you're beating him and not not in a bad way, do you know yeah, what I mean? Yeah, like, yeah, yeah. Fair sport, but definitely but holding the own yeah, at least. Some of them were beating him, do you know what I mean? Wow. And they were like interesting. I thought, for now, it's good good to see. Do you know what level it? Because there's that there's that like you think there's an effort ethos in it about races. You think oh they're untouchable. Yeah, yeah. What? We've got two arms, two legs, and a mum and dad. And that's okay. what made, <laughs> that's what made me realise with Josh Barnett when I wrestled him. There's lads down here who I trained who give me an hard and match in gym. Than what Josh did, do you get what I mean? So yeah. like, it made me realise. I think Sakuraba had that mindset as well yeah, because yeah. at that time, yeah. Graces were like yeah. untouchable. It's got to be playful, I think, and, and enjoy and it. It's, it's when, it's when you think it. about stress, and this is why we MMA. I was stressed. I was thinking, I've got to do this, got to do that, got to do that. Now I just think, now nah, me, you know what I mean? Uh, me pre-match warm up is I go out for a meal and have two Guinnesses and I, 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 <laughs> night before I perform brilliant I just think because it's fun then yeah you, you you forget why you do things the reason why you started MMA or grappling or stuff like that is because it's fun it shouldn't be a stress once money and stuff will come into it and like stress comes into it you're not enjoying it anymore yeah, for sure, and that's what not. I found with MMA I was like I wanted so much so much I wanted so much, so much, I tried so hard and I didn't get it. Yeah. But if I went in with this playful mindset and I've done it, and like this is what I'm doing with cats well, now. The just, difference there is, brother, yeah. like, say you wanted so much, it's that you wanted that end target, yeah. but you want to enjoy the journey going there. Yeah, yeah. Whereas now you're just stressed. enjoying this nah, journey. Nah, I don't give a fuck, I, don't, I, I could go out glue sniffing or something like that and <laughs> perform good. You know, like now, nah, I just yeah. think it's your mindset. Yeah, for and sure. And this is what I've learned in your mindset. Age isn't just a number. Yeah, you, you don't recover as good stuff like that, but I've started having cold showers, that, that, yeah. that helps me, I've got a sauna in. I've is that from that Wim Hof thing? Yeah, I feel brilliant. On the morning I get a freezing cold shower, my dick goes like an acorn, but... <laughs> it, it, <laughs> well, like an acorn before, but... You feel... It, you feel brilliant. Have you ever had a cold shower? Do you ever well, know? I've tried it, and I'll tell you why I've tried it. Uh, Did you have a go like an acorn? I'll tell you why i tried it. There's a... Professor Craig Tetley from Gracie Barra Bradford, yeah. uh, who I've done uh, jiu-jitsu with, uh, he came up with this Wim Hof thing. Yeah, he said, look, yeah, it's really good. Yeah. You know, try this, get your cold showers. I tried it, brother. I went uh, lukewarm uh, and I was like, oh, I can't uh, do it. But he swears by I it. swear by it. And then I watched I, a documentary I on that Wim Hof. has got a cryo one in the Sheffield. He, he's oh. got one like it. And I go on that as well. And uh, that's awesome as well. But he was telling me that cold shower, so I'll do that and sauna as well. I've got sauna in the house. Well, that, yeah, he mentioned sauna for like sauna. joints and stuff like that. I've been getting sauna, doing that. Pilates in yoga, mate. I feel brilliant. Yeah, uh, Pilates. You got to keep it all tight. Yeah, don't yeah. It? So you your core fingers, and, and you work flexibility, and then uh, and the yoga as well, and that helps me. And honestly, that has improved my game. Whereas before, everything were impact and stuff like that. It's she's just been a bit more sensible. Yeah, isn't it? train smart and Randy Couture put me onto that. John like I he trained like I used to run. I used to think, right, I've got to run three mile, two mile, one mile. I've got the four days weights, spa boxing, and it like I had this thing that I had to do. And if I didn't do it, I was like, gutted. It's but, like you had to punish your yeah. body to feel like you're but getting But like now, the thing, it doesn't matter if I turn up pissed up and roll, as long as I get a roll in and have fun. Yeah, and yeah. like, I perform better. I, I like, everyone says to me, oh, I'm starting a training camp. What's a training camp? You didn't have them. Do you know what I mean? My training camp's been 26 years rolling or boxing or yeah. tie boxing every day. Like they'll say, oh, I'm starting camp tomorrow. I think, you're talking shit. If you're a martial artist, you should be training hard every day. day. Yeah. Don't get me wrong, you have your easy days and stuff like that, but... But it's that consistency. Consistency, that's what it is. I don't I don't have camps. All I'll do that's different when I'm training for the fight is if I've got a met weight, I'll do a bit more cardio. Yeah. If I feel a bit unfitter, I'll start doing tabatas, like skiers, yeah. skill mills, yeah. battling ropes and stuff like that to get my fitness up. I don't... Do you know what I mean? Yeah, 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 I know what you mean. And, and, and that's all I do. I just add a bit more cardio in. Do you know what I mean? Or I have some harder rounds, some stress rounds, and what? Another thing that I found as well, I used to have really hard rounds all the time, like we, like really good MMA guys, Thai boxing guys, wrestling guys, jiu-jitsu guys, and I'd search out all these really good guys to test me. But then what I found is I started getting better than them at their discipline. I don't mean to sound big headed. I started getting better than them and catching them at their. And I'm thinking, I struggle then. So then I had to think where I was weaker than them. So like if I got a big meat head, I'd think, right, hey, I'll start from underneath. Or a big 20 so man. So you kind of put yourself in a disadvantage. Dis disadvantage work to that. work out of that. And that's right. what I started doing. And, and like, and then I watched a really cool thing a bit ago, the 70-30 approach. It's like, 
if you train with a guy who's a black belt, say you've got two equal black belts, you train with him all the time. Yeah. All new stuff you learn, you're not going to try it on him because of that highly technical. Like, say, like right. I've got Ryan Hunter, who's a really good jiu jitsu guy. Yeah, I know. Who you I mean, wrestle yeah. with him and, and we have some really good. I, I, I love training with him because there's no egos between me and him. And he throws me, I throw him, we catch each other, and it's, it's great. But the new stuff, if I tried it on him, it won't work on him because you're still learning it. Yeah. So then I get like cannon fodder, like it sounds bad, like, yeah, yeah, yeah. but I use it on them. So those so are the 70 30. Skill, so yeah. I wrestle with someone who's like 70 30, so like I know 70% of the time I'm going to be, and they might yeah. catch me or something and stuff like that. But if you wrestle like that all the time, you get to test your arsenal yeah, and you're yeah. not scared of testing it. And then when you go with that black belt, then you've tested it a thousand times and then it'll work. And that, that's what I'm saying. But you're doing. right, because it is that toolbox, yeah. and if you yeah. don't keep playing with yeah. different tools, it's just going to end up rusting it's and you'll like, just forget about like, it. You know what you're saying? I, I used to agree in hard sparring and stuff like that, but now I've started to look at, I think, you get concussions, you get injuries and stuff like that. Your longevity of sport don't last. It's like getting a car and battering it every day, flashing yeah. it every day. And now I play with a playful mindset. So, like, when I spar, I don't care if I'm in a bad position. I put myself on the wall and let him hit me and I make it my strength. Like, yeah. my game when I was doing MMA, I would counter fight. I used to run off. I saw it as a fast game of Tigger, like Tig running off. Yeah. This gym made me not do that because it was that small. Where are you going to run, bro? It was that small. It was here and it was dark in that corner and I used to get shit knocked out of me. And it forced me to learn how to fight in a phone box. Right. And then it forced me to learn how to wrestle because she engaged. And so now I just train, I train, where I'm weak, I train my weaknesses, yeah, and, that, and yeah, that's, yeah. that's all I've done now. And I get them like guys to practice, it sounds horrible to practice on, but they get better because they learn it and then they get better and they test you more. And then like once a month, I might, uh, or a couple of months I might get better, or Tommy down, you know, wrestlers, yeah. and wrestle with them. They're really wrestling, cool yeah. lads, Cool guys, they? yeah, do you know what I mean? Uh, so stuff <laughs> like that, so like, yeah, I'm trying to go outside my box, but... I'm very funny how I train with as well because you get idiots, don't you? As well, that's another thing I found. Yeah. You get a lot of lads because, uh, like now, because I'm a black belt, that I've got a target on me, like, and everyone's exactly, trying to kill yeah, me. Yeah. And I'm thinking, I'm 42 years old. I don't want people trying to slam me on me. Yeah, yeah, so yeah. I get to know them first. I say, I'll oh, come to class, get to know them, and then learn them. That you get way. the vibes, don't yeah. you, brother? You know, yeah, don't you? I, uh, and that, and that's what it is. So. That's why I said Brett and Tommy are really cool. I, I remember when they were young kids, kids yeah. and I used to train with Jimmy. Yeah, that, that you know, he's Jim in uh, Shipley, and he would just. There were him, there were Brett, Tommy, and his sister Kate. Kate, yeah, she yeah. Really good she's brother. an American yeah. now, I think. And they were just like little kids running yeah, around, yeah, you know. Yeah. But they're just cool kids. kids yeah, yeah. Like now with Brett and Tommy, there's a slight difference, right? Brett was someone you can chat about anything. Yeah. There's no drama. <clears throat> he can be diplomatic with Tommy. I think you if his head goes, yeah, you can see he's angry. He's, like, he's, like, he's like the Dave Butlin and the Ian Butlin. Yeah, do you know what I mean? Yeah, <laughs> That's yeah, the difference. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, the, it, yeah. I've noticed that. Like your spa, like when I see them sparring down in a spa, like. Like Brett, I'm not saying that Tommy ain't technical. Like Brett's like the technical approach, yeah, and he's yeah. like really technical, fast, everything, really skillful. Tommy's one of Brett's like your jiu jitsu. Yeah. Tommy's like your catch. Yeah. You Tommy will get you back in a slam on you. He does not give a fuck. In that. I like that. You know, he's got that like swagger about him. He's got that like, that <coughs> street attitude, and yeah. I like that. But Tommy, uh, Brett has as well because Brett's a fighting kid. But I like them both, and uh, I love rolling with them. Obviously, with people like that, brother, no matter what discipline they get into, like yourself, yeah. you, you 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 just become good, like really good at wrestling. They're really good at boxing as well. Yeah, I yeah. Think whatever, athletes, athletes, yeah, exactly. Athletes. I, I can't wait till the cross over into MMA, me. Wow, yeah. Because I think they'll cause the right scene. Because they're tough hard kids, aren't they? Yeah, they're, yeah. They're rough. They've had it. Like you can see, like the. I don't mean it like they've had a rough upbringing, but that you can see that they've got the wits about yeah, them. Yeah. They're, they're, they're like. Streetwise, aren't they? Do you know what I mean? And I think they're clever. Oh, one hundred percent, brother. Now, one of the fights you mentioned that you, it was a, a, a rewarding fight for you was against Mick Sinclair. Yeah. Where was that? And talk us through about that. That was tough out years ago. That was right. It's like my battle brother in Mick. Yeah, I like, yeah. I like Mick. Because I've had him yeah. on a podcast. Yeah, he's a lovely, Mick. lovely yeah, kid. Yeah. I always say it was probably my hardest match. Um, yeah, we we had a fight. Obviously, at the time he was like. He was more the wrestler and I was more yeah. the tie boxer. And I can and I think his nickname was it the Pitbull, the English Bull uh, Terrier, English, the, bo- bo- yeah, English, English Bull Terrier, yeah, or something English, or something English like ball, that. Yeah, there's yeah. the Mongols, yeah, <laughs> the shitbag killer. Uh, and I, yeah, so yeah, we had a war basically. And uh, he was, I would say, he was a better wrestler than me. But he took me down. I was going for more submissions and stuff like that. It could have gone either way. Yeah. But he was on top. I was more. I was probably more into my jits then. Right. And uh, I was going for submissions. I can remember I got a shot in it and I got him in a guillotine first round and it were, it ran. I blew my arms. I, I, I tore my arm. Uh, I couldn't throw pu- My arms were that pumped up. I couldn't throw punches. So I kept kicking his leg, kicking his leg. I can remember at one point I ate him in head with a knee. And I, I fucking hurt my knee. It was that bad. And he was like, 
He just looked at me and I thought, fucking hell, mate, from death here. It was just like one of the wars, you know what I mean? It was like, I took, I took more shots than a, than a drunk. It was like, shit, it was like, it was bad, you know what I mean? But like, we just knocked shit out of each yeah. other. And I can remember, I thought it was a five round fight, mate, I don't know why. Uh, and I kicked his leg to bits and, and I can remember they carried him back to his stall, third round, and you see him. And, and what's his brother with him? Yeah, Rob, Rob and he, and I thought, if this goes to the fifth round, I'm going to stop him with leg kicks. And yeah. he even said to me afterwards, he says, I think the day after he went on holiday, he says, Ian, I couldn't fucking walk. It must have been like Elvis Presley. Card, card, card woman came out for f- f- fourth round. I thought, yes, it's another round, I'm finishing here. And it won't, it was only a three round match. I don't know why I thought it was a five rounder, but do you know something? Do you know like I mean? Like, I bonded with Mick, and, yeah, I'm, and I, I couldn't say it. he's a he's great guy and just he's an I, awesome person. I, and, I, and Rob, same. I love yeah. them both. I don't see them much. I drop on them once a year, and same with Cam. Yeah. Do you know, like, they're the type of people, Mick, Cam, and Rob, I never, even in a grappling tournament, I never compete against them because I just, like, value that, like, I just love them. Do you know yeah, what I mean? Yeah. Like, even, I probably see them, like, probably once every two, three years, but I've got this, like, bond with them. Like, it's weird. They, I don't know whether they feel that way. I'm probably, like, gay towards them or something <laughs> like that. <laughs> well, the Rob, I had Rob C4 Sinclair, yeah, wasn't it? Yeah. I had him on the, the podcast. The, the, the reason I remember what you're talking about, Mick, is... When he went on the podcast, he opened up about his mental health. Yeah, and yeah, because yeah, he suffered, didn't yeah, he? Yeah, the dark place, and and he really opened up, which was cool because it makes people know that, look, even though these people are, are yeah. athletes and they're competing on premiership level, yeah. everyone struggles, yeah. don't they, brother? Yeah. You, know? you know I think a lot of it is concussions, and I don't think yeah. it's... <laughs> I think it is. You look, you look at fighters, what they go through, again, battered, dropped on the head, even like Ian Bromley. Yeah. I still think, me. He's been in some wars in wrestling, in wrestling gym and that. He was fucking tough as boots and me yeah. like the hardest man alive. He was like Andy Cooper, he was, right, he was right. like Clint Eastwood. Because he wasn't a big guy, was he? No, but yeah. I've seen him, me, even his, I've seen him, me, taped up, like Sakuraba. Even his wrestling boots had tape on him, he was that hard. Do you know, like, he was like, honestly, mate, he was just hard. And I can remember me, God's honest truth this way, I wrestled this, uh, it was a, he's a black belt under Damien Meyer now, right. I like called, I think he's Yassir from Denmark, right? He's right. a black belt under Damien Meyer. And I wrestled him and I beat him and he was fucking tough, like he was heavier than me, 95 kilograms, and I beat him. Bromley was probably 80 kilograms, right? Obviously he was 52 years old or 50 or what year older when I fought him. Is that it, old he Yeah, was? 52, and he was still getting up out with young kids. He didn't look that no, old, you know. He looked 100. No, he yeah. yeah. <laughs> did, but no, it was just like, I, I don't know. But he had an ACL replacement, right? An ACL surgery, this goes right through this. Turned up at the tournament, he's got his brace around his knee, I goes, what are you doing? Is uh, I had my ACL done. I went, oh, sound. I was when he went two weeks ago. I sound. So yeah. you thought he's not competing? No. And then the next thing, he's walking about in wrestling boots. I went, Ian, are you competing? He went, yeah. He goes, he goes, this is how it's going down. I was, oh, you're wrestling. He went, yeah, see. He went, I went, fucking hell, he's a big dude, him. And you've got an ACL, like, had an ACL surgery two, two weeks, weeks ago. ago. I went, he goes, this is how it's going to go. He says, he's going to shoot him. Grab me like that, bend me. And I grab his head and crank his neck and pin him. Oh, fucking hell, you mad bastard. Got up, Matt, and did exactly what he said. And I thought, he's the hardest man alive. Yeah. The lad was bending his leg. And I'd have been oh, tapping yeah. me. And I thought, you fucking hard bastard, right? And then, so that was that, right? Thought, no, it. Right? Two years have gone by. Seen Bromley again, right? His collarbone has snapped off his uh, sternum and it's out here. Literally out here, right? Couldn't move his arm. And I goes, oh, you, I go, he goes, oh, I've seen my collarbone. I goes, what? And it was like something out of fucking, I'm a moving. Do you remember Total Recall? Yeah. When fucking Quaid comes out. Yeah. Like, Quaid. <laughs> it was like his collarbone. They're like, Quaid. It was stuck out in, he goes to me. He goes, uh, <laughs> I goes, look at my collarbone. I went, fucking hell. I was, you're not wrestling then today. I take it. I went, yeah, I am. I went, you're mad. The surgeon, like, is re- high up on the... Uh, to do with like because he's into rugby here, yeah. there's so much to do with like uh, Wigan rugby team right. like, uh, like a bloke he says if you wrestle he says you could lose lose you to your arm because it was that bad it was like, like yeah yeah all woman. the connections and everything and then he says but if you have it operated I'd probably never wrestle again so you're going to fucking Matt wrestle the one British title I'm thinking there's something not right here <laughs> you know what I mean there's something like there's just a mindset about it's it that mindset, there's, there's it, mindset brother. and, and uh, this is what men realise he's 52 years old yeah Andy Cooper was the same as him. Steve yeah. Adams was the same as him. Like, at 40, I can remember Steve beating everyone up. And I'm like thinking, the 40 year old, and to then I like looked at him as old then, but like, well, now, when, did, I, when we went yeah. to Andy Cooper's, I used to think he's like 40 years old. He's fuck out of his skinny. I'm like thinking, fuck me. And then I realised it's, it's, I call it like the 1% of me. There's just, yeah. there's just something in the mind. And this is, this is what I've started to learn, me now. It's like, my brother once said the same to me. I was like, uh, What's worse, the tiger in the mind or the tiger in the jungle, right? 
it's your mind isn't it you yeah. can make a fucking mountain out of a fucking mole yeah yeah and after that i just thought fucking hell, i've built this and i started using it and i take and i take that analogy to everything and i just think yeah all i'm gonna do is put myself in an army comfort zone train out of that comfort zone it just makes you mentally stronger yeah and, yeah and that's what it was I was like when i was younger i like you learn some people are born with mental toughness but i think you learn you can learn it yeah, and i've learned it me and i think the most important thing i've ever learned is mental toughness and it's these matches yeah michael holmes michael hobbs fucking mick sinclair thomas hilton wade yeah josh barnett the, uh another guy i, I lost uh andy clamp i lost okay. him and he beat me right but I'm glad I lost them all because the fucking the, the people I lost them made me stronger. And this that, that Andy Clamp, fucking brilliant wrestler, monster, absolute monster on Matt. What people don't know is, right, when I wrestled him, I was a week away from fucking doing this in, right. I didn't train. I really? month off work, yeah. And I went and I turned up and I thought I'd enter this grappling tournament. I thought I'm gonna wrestle. I turned up at wrestling tournament. I'm cornering lads, right. So I'm not making excuses. He's fucking. Uh, he's an absolute beast and he's big. He's a big fucking powerful beast. So I'm calling it lads, but I learned so much from this match. It like made me not, if I can perform on a bad day, I can perform on a good day and beat anyone. So I'm calling it lads, right? I'm meant to wrestle a lad called, I think it was Stuart Price or something. I think he's one of Cam, Cam Actor's lads. And he was meant to wrestle this other kid, right? And it was meant to be at five o'clock. So at like three o'clock, I'm sat there eating a fucking rice pudding and a bastard ch chip butty or something stupid <laughs> like that, calling it lads, right? He's there warming up and I'm thinking, what's going on here? So I didn't know what, because I'm calling lads as well. I should have been selfish and done it for myself. So then, they've called him out. He's up, Matt, warming up. Called the other lad out who we were meant to wrestle. Not here. Called the lad out who I was meant to wrestle. He's not here. So it's an instant final. Yeah. My lads are wrestling. I walked over to Matt. What's happening? Wrestling. I thought, fuck. I won't even warm up. The corner man had got asked Mick Sinclair. He had to go. And uh, there's another lad called Ole, Ole blah, 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 and uh, he's like a Barnsley black belt. And uh, I says, can you call me? Yeah, of course I can. So I'm not warmed up. There we're belly full of fucking rice pudding. <laughs> God, Matt, I've got this big fucking Adonis God here, fucking <laughs> massive, who can wrestle. I'm thinking, fuck me. I'm not even warmed up, not mentally prepared, no nothing. Yeah? I, I were in a bad place because I'm fucking depressed and wanted yeah. to kill myself and shit like that. He's come out, bang, double leg me, took me down. I thought, fuck me. Pass me guard, got points, he's got seven points, so I'm thinking, fucking hell. He kneeled on my belly, I'm not kidding, I felt rice pudding come up from my fucking <laughs> nose, I'm thinking, I'm gonna spew up here. And then, he muffled me, and I swear I've been for a shit, mate, I could smell shit, I know, I'm kidding. He muffled me, so he's got me right, I'm like, mm, 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 thinking I'm gonna spew up. And I don't know how I managed to do it, I don't know my retard strength, I managed to mong out, get up back to my feet, I thought, thank fuck for that, but he's seven points up now, so I'm losing. So then. And that's quite significant, yeah, managing seven fucking, points. But, He's an athlete, he's a purebred yeah. athlete, he's like a fucking racehorse. He's fast, he's big, and I, I, I truly believe, I, I don't know whether he fights MMA, but I think he'd get in UFC and cause some upsets. He's right. a fucking dude. Uh, and basically, he kept shooting in at me, and I know I've got a world class guillotine, kept getting that guillotine on, and I thought, I've got him here. But we'd gone off mats onto the next match, so this referee who don't like me, I swear he don't like me, he's not we're getting to Asians, but I swear he didn't like me. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> so I had a swash I had a gear with swash sticker on no, no. but like anyway every time I went off mat I got him in his guillotine I thought I've got him I've got him I start back up and start from shut up again and he was wearing on me because I'm not oh, that frustrating yeah you frustrating well. but he was wearing on me because he was fit and he was struggling yeah. like normally you get big guys he's a special guy yeah, yeah. He's a special athlete he kept taking me like going in I get guillotine five times it happened I thought and I lost some points but I learned so much about that yeah and I was in a bad place and then I went and fought on Chris uh, Thompson's show then a couple of weeks later and I fought another guy who was like a, I think you were a European guy, uh, Jamie Hughes, I want to wrestle him again. Was Is that, that on the Nogi tournament? Nogi tournament, yeah. 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 And I'm, to be fair, I, batted, I thought I won him there. Yeah. I was going for submissions and they're like, what they probably, that, what the referee didn't even know what a submission, like put like, I've got like a choke, like a punch choke. And right. a lot of people can't see because it doesn't look like you're going for all. Ah, okay. And I are on top of him going for that and I thought, oh, I'm winning. And they give it to him, right? And it was the same fucking ref. I thought, he hates me. And he just likes jits guys. But, yeah, so, I learnt that year, I lost twice, right? And I've not lost, I'm not lost no gi for 12 years. And it fucking... So, like you were saying, you've got the highest high, but the lowest of all. yeah. And then I wrestled that, is it Paul Craig? That, uh, is, is, is it UFC? UFC, UFC I wrestled him. Huh? Well, this is another thing. I, were, I just got my black belt, but... Yeah. I was probably doing gi once a week, so I should... My own fault, really. Same again. At this comp, cornering all lads, 10 lads, 
I've got that Paul Craig and, and, and uh, Ink D. He's quite tall, lad, as well, isn't he? Massive, he's saying, but that Andy can't beat him in the mm. tournament. So I picked him up, took him down, got him, got him in, got him past his guard, and I started messing about for a shin lock. Legs came over, triangle me, I've got his big dick in my face here, fucking joking me. I don't know if it was that or fucking the triangle. And he, he was a purple about it, somebody was trying to go, I fucking thought, I'm fucking gutted, absolutely gutted. So I'd like lost in gi, as a out of black belt, he was purple about it, I thought, I can't have this. But I had him again, in no gi, same day. So, I fucking, we were wrestling, same again, I thought this time I'm just going to go in. I went in. He shot in at me and I got him in a guillotine, mate. And he fuck it, honestly, it was it were, built, it were on. The guillotine was locked on, I could It was like, it was, it were like gagging like me with a bread yeah. bag on my head. Yeah. So I got it on and he ran me straight through judge's table, smashed table all over, and guillotine were on and I wrapped my legs around him. And I but, cross we gone off the mat, same oh, referee man. again. Same referee again, honestly, mate, he hates me. Same referee again, restarted from front, but I, I beat him on point, so right. I like redeemed myself, mate. Like, even though he won't turn him because there's another lad from the same gym as me right. we didn't want to wrestle each other so I pulled out yeah. he got the gold medal but I beat him do you get what I mean so, so, it, mean. so them matches I've learnt from it's like uh, and that's what makes you good here it them, does them yeah losses. because the thing is you like you said the highest of the high the lowest of the yeah. low and one of the things you mentioned brother was um, when you're in a bad place and you said for you it's like a, this black yeah. cloud you yeah. know around you and that reminds me of a, a youtube clip if people uh, want to see it, it's called the black dog yeah and i don't know if you've seen it or not brother i have actually yeah, yeah. and it kind of summarizes it yeah. well done it where yeah. everyone has this dog oh, with yeah, them yeah. And it's just how they, yeah. they're able to control it. Some people, unfortunately, get to a stage where it just overwhelms yeah. them. I think it's what you feed it as well, isn't it? It's like, yeah. if you feed it pedigree it's... <laughs> yeah, 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 it's going to be a big beast, <laughs> it's a big isn't it? Beast, you know? yeah. You've got to keep it starving. Yeah, yeah, yeah starving. Yeah, that, that's what it is. And I think it's yeah, yeah, the people you're around. Sometimes you've got to look at the people that you're around. It's like... It's like it is cancerous, isn't it, brother? Yeah. It's like a mouldy fruit. It's like that yeah. there's a thing on Facebook. And I, the only way I can explain it, it's like you could have a banana, strawberries and stuff yeah. like that. One of them gets mouldy, it all wears off, it's contagious. So you've got to get away from them people and that's what I did at work at. At the time they were brilliant people but then it started getting mouldy fruit and, and that's what sent me off and I had yeah. concussion and shit like that. So, so you know, the, the turning. what was the turning point for you Ian when you felt really down and you thought you, you're in the woods and you got your dog, what was the turning point that you thought, I can't, I don't Ian want to do Ian Brom was not. Ian Brom was not. When Ian fingered, I thought, fucking hell, why has he done that? And you know what I thought as well? I thought, what a... Like, you know, a great guy, an humble guy, and every, everything was brilliant. He's like, Ian's instilled everything in me. He's like, got one of his spirit. And I, I've always, like, there's been a connection between me and Ian. Yeah. It's, it's weird. I don't know what it is. We're very much alike. But it was, it was like, when he died, I thought, Because his daughter, William, was like yeah, 10 or less? Something like that, I thought, mm. what a loss of knowledge. Do you know what I mean? A loss of knowledge. Because, like, I know, like, compared to, like, like, if he were, like, a... Uh, if he put what he put into wrestling to university, he'd be a fucking grand fucking right, master. Right, big professor. Yeah, do you know what I mean? Yeah, but because yeah. it's cats, you like think, oh, she knows how to fate. But to me, it's like that knowledge, yeah, fast yeah. knowledge. You're like, you're a beast. And I used to just ask him so far, do I beat half guard? I'm doing this. And he always had it. It was always something simple. And I used to think, what a beast. And uh, when I saw his daughter walking up with dog, it brought me. And I thought of my own daughter. And I just thought, Jesus Christ, you know what I mean? Yeah. So, yeah. That, that changed it for me. <laughs> yeah. And I hope it kind of helps others as well to yeah. realise that, you know, there is a light at the end of the tunnel, yeah, no, and although it, it, it is difficult, and we all go through these yeah. dramas, don't we, brother, yeah. and we just yeah. got to find a way, yeah. it's hard, but you've yeah. got to find a it's way. your mind goes, your body follows, isn't it? Yeah. Uh, but it's all right, people can tell you what to do and this and that, you've got to find your own way out, haven't you? Yeah. When you're walking about in fucking darkness at the bottom, anyone can look in from an eagle's room and say, you've got to go that way, oh, you've got, yeah, it's easy but to you've got to find it. your own way, sometimes you've got to say, but then, there's that difference between, are you going to do it, or aren't you going to do it? Like, yeah. the man tried doing a send in, and right. uh, that fucked me head up a bit, you know what I mean? It's like, uh, just like my mum was like a strong woman, do you know what I mean? But at times she packed in work, she'd had, uh, I think she had, a, we didn't know at times, like mini TI strokes, and that, that, that played with it, but uh, one good thing came out of it, she, <laughs> I can always remember it, where she rang up, she went, uh, she went in and I thought she pissed up or she had a stroke here so I went straight on from work ambulance is here and all I can remember my mum smokes and I hate smoking anyway but I love Animo Snake you know them Animo yeah, yeah, Snakes yeah 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 the one of them in Sigash and it like <laughs> it put me off it put me off it and like one good thing came out of it you know what I mean it put me on fucking Animo Snake so, <laughs> so I'm not getting diabetes <laughs> oh, <laughs> so you learn from hardship <laughs> yeah so she's alright now like yeah yeah 
That's cool, man. Like I went round the other day, she was writing the name and shit on walls. So like, <laughs> no, she's bang, she's bang on. She's bang on. Oh, man. Ian, I didn't realise this was going to be so entertaining, this podcast. Honestly, brother, man. I've noticed it's all involved shit as well, isn't it? I'm like... <laughs> but, so... Listen, Ian, thank you so ah, much, man. Yeah. Honestly, I've enjoyed it, and I'm yeah. sure the viewers are going to enjoy yeah, this. Yeah. But before we go, brother, right, yeah. we're going to put all this stuff down there, yeah. and we're going to roll for yeah, five yeah. minutes. Can uh, for a piss first? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Ian, thank yeah. you so yeah. much. Yeah. Let's go get ready and have ah, this yeah. roll. Yeah. Come on, then, brother. Yeah. The time is there. One of the conditions is the mongoose, brother. You can't neck crank. None of this catches cat yeah. scan stuff. Right, we're ready to go? Yeah. Right, brother, it's been emotional. <laughs> Oh. 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 Last long, dude. Oh. You got five to beat, bro. Oh. 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 This is going to be a long time. Oh, no. <laughs> oh. Oh. Yeah. This lot. <laughs> Brother. Oh, no. I need a breather. Oh. What are you doing? Oh, brother. Right, I'm warmed up now. Now you're in trouble. Uh, I didn't want to hurt you. Uh, oh. Oh. That's five, that. Is that like the Peruvian neck yeah. thing? Uh? Right, brother. Now to give you some pain. That's all it is, is that. Yeah. And that. Yeah. Would so, that be allowed in the judicial? Yeah. Then? Yeah. Choke it. Is that time not done yet? Yeah. Back to it, is that? Yeah. 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 You like those leg scissors, don't you? Yeah. Oh. No. Hold on. Let's get a couple of seconds to catch. Oh yeah. I was expecting that we go. Seconds. What are you looking at time for? You look like you want to give up. Go check in for hell. Come on. Come on. 
Yeah, yeah. Oh, what was that? Wrist lock. <laughs> Now, brother, come on, eh? <laughs> ah, yeah. Oh, everywhere then. Oh, yeah, thank you so much. Thank you, brother. Catch this catch, guy. It's a killer. <laughs> <laughs>